Tom, Tom, I almost want to admonish you for making that caveat because we shouldn't have to. Exactly. And this again shows how people's brains have been broken. Why should you have to put that disclaimer? Exactly. This shows I, how just, dis this shows how uh, yeah. people's brains have been broken because mm -hmm. nothing we have said has even suggested that that's the case. But people are so yeah. freaking like jacked up and crazy now that they're just seeing things in this binary, right? They're blinded. It's like it's a binary. It's like you're this or you're that. So that's all. It, it, like it doesn't make sense. It's a, it's 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 a psychosis because it's not. It's not logical. It's not rational. It's not reasonable. And the people who are doing it don't realize that like they've created their own faulty logic, which they think makes sense, but it doesn't, right? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Your Mate Tom podcast. Today's guest is Zuby. Zuby is one of those guys that when I listen to on social media, it's like having a fresh breath of air because it's like, oh man, you finally some reason and sanity in this insane world you know it kind of just says it how it is but in a very thoughtful grounded way and so of course these are the kind of guys that i love speaking to i really appreciate him coming on please check him out i'll leave the links to his socials in the description box and of course thank you to our patrons you guys make this all possible i'm not sure if you guys have noticed but the last one or two years i haven't had a single sponsor on this channel you know and i'm not saying that i'm not going to moving forward but if i can to the best of my ability i would love this podcast and just youtube channel in general to be completely fan funded you know just so we can kind of cut through that crap and i don't ever have to worry about what i can and cannot say so if this sounds like something that resonates with you and you you do enjoy a podcast your support really does mean the world and it does keep us doing what we're doing you know so please check out our patreon at patreon.com slash your mate Tom. We have awesome exclusive content that you can only see on Patreon, uh, certain videos and documentaries that I've done in the past, also a podcast with my fiance and I. Yeah, so if you're interested, check out our Patreon, become a monthly supporter, I would truly appreciate it. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this podcast. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know what you think, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Your Mate Tom podcast. Today we have Zuby, and you wear a lot of hats. I was looking, Google searching your name, and it's like rapper, uh, world record women deadlifter, uh, you know, political commentator. Like, what, what do you kind of go by these days? Independent rapper, author, podcast host, public speaker, coach. Those are probably the big five. I think that was five. Um, but if I'm going to narrow it down, I normally say rapper and creative entrepreneur because that kind of covers most things. Yeah, and uh, just for those people who aren't aware of what you do or like, how, how did you get into this journey? Because from what I'm, I'm aware that you've you started off with rapping in the UK. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you, how did that, how did you get even into that? You know, like, what what was yeah. actually your upbringing? before even going into mm -hmm. that because i know that your yeah. mom's from nigeria like i both i got both immigrant parents so i know what it's like to grow up in a country where both your parents aren't from that land mm -hmm. uh so yeah man how let us know. yeah sure man so um if you want to go back so i was born in england when i was a baby my family moved to saudi arabia so that's where i was raised and i went to school there until the age of 11 but actually lived in the country technically until I was 20. I went to boarding school in the UK when I was 11 years old. And so I was in boarding school for seven years. And then I went to university. I studied at Oxford. I did computer science. I was there for three years, uh, graduated when I was 20. And I started making music. I started rapping when I was in my first year of university. I released my first album, which was called Commercial Underground when I was in this uh, when I was 19, when I was in my second year of university. And that is how the music started. So it began just as a hobby and I got serious about it pretty quickly, started performing, uh, put out my first album 10 months after I'd started rapping and started to build a little name for myself with that and an initial fan base. And that that's how it all began. That's a very uh, abbreviated version of how I got into it all. What got you into music? Like, were you always into music growing up? Like, did you play mm. instruments or? Yeah, funnily enough, um, I was not a music fan when I was growing up. I actually played piano, though. 
I played piano in my childhood. I played piano for, I don't know, probably about seven or eight years in total. I used to even do recitals, but I wasn't really a music fan. I wasn't, I didn't get into music until I went to boarding school. When I was like 12, 13, I started getting into hip hop. I have a couple older brothers and they used to listen to hip hop and rap. So I used to hear some of it coming from their bedrooms and whatever, but I was not really a music fan myself on any individual level until I was about 12 or 13. And that's when I started listening to various hip hop artists. And then in my mid teens, I got really like, I was a super hip hop head. I was, you know, subscribed to vibe and the source magazine and I was buying new albums. Literally I'd buy a new album, probably, you know, two, three albums a month. Um, between myself and my friends, we probably were buying about 15 to 20 albums a month. And then wow. we were all, we we're all in boarding school together. So we swap them around. <laughs> yeah. And this was Fine like the mini disc. Yeah. <laughs> and this was the mini disc period as well. So, um, you know, we'd burn CDs and create mini discs and share music around. And it was a really exciting time. Actually. I, I think it's a shame how fast food, like many aspects of music consumption have become because mm. I do miss those days where it was like, all right, this is the release date. And we'd actually go down specifically go into town and go to HMV or FOP and buy the CDs and, you know, be on the way back and be like looking through the packaging and reading the liner notes and getting all excited about what we're going to listen to. Whereas now people it's, I don't know. I think it's taken away a lot of the, a lot of the fun of the art and of the consumption with all the, you know, streaming is great and access accessibility is cool, but accessibility can make people devalue things. You know, if you just get something and it's quick and it's easy and it feels like it's free and it's just digital, there's no physical component. It takes away a lot of the art as far as I'm concerned, which is part of why, mm. you know, every single release I've put out, I've done physical. You know, I've put out nine physical albums and EPs. I've got my first vinyl coming out next year. So oh, awesome. whilst my music is available digitally, the physical side is still very important to me and, a, and millions of other people, by the way, like it's complete nonsense that nobody buys music anymore. It's com complete garbage. Um, people don't buy music as much as they used to, but people still buy CDs. People absolutely still buy, buy vinyl. People still buy, people even buy tapes. People still buy music. Tapes, um, wow. And... Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a complete lie that I wish would die that nobody buys music anymore. Like, I mean, I think some artists say that cause you know, maybe no one buys, you know, maybe, there are some fan bases who maybe don't, don't buy music, but if your, your audience base does not buy your music at all, then, you know, maybe you've trained them to do that. I've trained my audience to buy music. So yeah. people do buy my music and uh, that's, that's all good. Well, I think that the people who didn't buy music even back in the day, uh, like I'm almost 30 now, so I'm not super old, but not super young, but I remember kind of going to that digital world. And mm. I had friends of mine who never bought CDs. They just refused to buy movies or anything. They just wanted to download everything. Yeah. And, but I was always into it. I bought an album a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, people should realize that people need to understand that by doing that, you're not supporting artists, exactly. you know, and this is a real philosophical thing. Um, you get people who think, oh, just because, and, you know, we, we, this has existed since way back in the Napster days and the, you know, all of that LimeWire and all yeah, that stuff. Metallica, you they know, got, they're, yeah. they're scapegoats for that. They're like, yeah, yeah. Own. So it, it's been, it's been a thing for a long time, but I, I think it's, th this goes beyond music. I, th I think it's mm -hmm. important for people to understand that your money is energy, right? And your money isn't just, it's not just currency. It's actually showing what you support and what you value and what you put your energy towards. So if you supposedly have a favorite singer or rapper or band or whatever, and you jack all their music for free, and then also you, you know, you don't buy their merchandise or necessarily pay for content, like you're not you might be a listener, but you're not supporting that artist. You're honestly not, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying this trying to like admonish people or whatever, but it's just, it's just the reality of what it is, right? You're, you're taking someone's work for free. If you were to do this in any other industry, any other sector, any other product, people would very clearly be able to see like, no, that's wrong. Like you can't just steal, yeah. you, you're, you, know, so you, can, just you can't just steal people's stuff, right? You, you, you can't just do that. But or at least be for consistent. some reason, when it comes to music and entertainment, music, movies, you know, maybe books to some degree and so on, 
there's been this notion for a couple of decades now, really, probably 20 years, where it's like, wow, it's it's different here. Or some people even have this messed up view that because musicians enjoy making music, that they shouldn't be compensated for it, right? And again, you don't think of this in any other job or sector or anything. And, and most artists give away like a, a lot. You know, most artists give away plenty of music and plenty of this and plenty of that. So I, I think it's important that if, if you want to support someone, make sure you actually support someone. If there's like a business you like or an individual like you like some way, shape or form, make sure that you are actually supporting them financially in some way, even if you're going to, if you're going to download their music, then, you know, buy their t-shirt or, you know, buy, buy a concert ticket or something. Um, I, I think that's important because also, you know, music is expensive to make movies are very expensive to make stuff is expensive to make. So if you do want that person to be incentivized to even keep creating, then, um, you know, you can only make so many albums or songs for free with no compensation before you want to pack it in. And then the same people will criticize artists for so-called selling out, right? Their artist will go and partner with a big company or yeah. they'll do some ad or whatever. And they'll be like, oh, they're selling out. It's like, well, they need to make money from something, right? They need, they need to make money from something. I can, I can tell you as a creator and you're, you're, you yourself are a creator, you know that money doesn't just appear from thin. It, it has to come from somewhere. Yeah. It has to come from advertising or from sales or from events. It has to come from somewhere, right? You can't just... Even if you have a large following, you can't just like that, that in itself doesn't just magically create money. I think some people think if you have a hundred thousand followers or subscribers or something that that means money just appears in your no, garden it doesn't and it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. People, you have to, there has to be some exchange. So I think it's important for people to get that. Yeah. You can be famous and broke at the same time. Like, yeah. Very, very, very much so. Probably more very common actually so. from yeah. like, the social media world. You know? Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how music does get singled out in terms of justifying theft. And mm -hmm. even you saying that people, I can already kind of hear that like, oh, you're just, you're just exaggerating or whatever. It's like, but how is that different to stealing a Mars bar from a supermarket or mm -hmm. anything like that? Like, yeah, it costs, it costs money, it costs money to create it. It took a lot of effort. It took research. It took development. It took time. It took many years of effort to, to do it. I, I think maybe some people don't really know how much goes into making an album, say, Oh, or man. even making a song. I think oh, some people gosh. don't really know. And so well, they just think, one. oh, it's just a, mm -hmm. just a download or it's just a piece of, you know, a CD is, you know, it's a piece of, but you're not paying for, you're not paying for the, the disc. You're paying for what is on the disc. Just like if you buy a book, you're, you're buying the information or story in the book, not just, it would be like, ima imagine with a book, someone was like, oh, it's just a, it's just a stack of, it's just a stack of paper. You're like, <laughs> yes. what? Like, what do you? <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? So that's just, that's just a disc. It's just a, it's just that a about file. Oh, it's science. Like, well, it's just it's just words. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, okay, yeah. Sure. A digital movie is just a file. Like anything digital is a file, but like the movie itself could have cost like two hundred million, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two hundred yeah. million dollars to to 100%. create. And you had to pay all the actors and all the cameramen and all the gaffers and all the locations and oh, the makeup and the all of that. The writing, so, the rewriting, the CGI, yeah, like yeah. All the so, so for me personally, I they deserve all that money. I, now that I yeah, know what goes yeah. behind a movie, I'm like, mate, take my money. You know, I haven't yeah. that like when I was younger, I was a bit of a thief. But at least sure. I, was, I was a consistent thief at, at the yeah. very least. Like I was looking at like supermarkets, like, oh, they're a big corporation, screw them. I'm just, what's one chocolate bar? And I would be the same for like famous artists. But obviously over time, it's mm. like stealing is wrong. You're doing some yeah, yeah. serious like psychological and spiritual damage. And you're kind of creating this world of scarcity. But in it, that's a whole different topic. But it's just yeah, funny yeah. how music and those fr like friends that I have who are so like righteous in that, like, they never steal, they never lie, they never do that. But when it comes to mm. music and movies, mate, that would download by the yeah. like terabyte. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's funny. And, and, and I think I think there's also this misconception as well that musicians are richer than they are. Mm. Mm, and I think that music is music is a funny world in many ways. It, it's 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 a, it's a very exceptional area. Another thing that's an exception is it's one of the it's one of the only careers where people compare you to the top 0.01% of people in your field 
And if you're not in the top 0.01%, a lot of people don't consider you successful. Wow, right. True. So if you think in any other career, you don't need to be like the top 100 in the world right, like to be considered successful. Yeah. Like, like you could have someone who's like a, a you know successful musician. They've got hundreds of thousands, even millions of, even millions of fans. Like they're not all over the radio or all over the TV or whatever, but you know, they've, they're very successful. They've built something great up. Uh, they can sell out a venue of several hundred people say in, you know, various cities and people will be like, oh, this person's like, you know, he's a failure. Like he's, he's not Jay-Z, he's not Eminem, he's not Drake. So, mm. you know, <laughs> so he's a failure, but, it, but it's, it's kind of crazy because you don't do that with anything else. You wouldn't see a, I don't know, a chef in a local restaurant and be, oh, well, he's not Gordon Ramsay. So he's obviously, uh, he's, he's, oh, oh, he's obviously take not it to that. that next level. And because you're not yeah. in the 0.001%, it's like, oh, you're yeah. shit. You're horrible. Yeah. You kill yourself. Yeah. 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 Whatever. yeah. It's, it's a, it's a weird one. It's a weird one, but yeah, that's an exception. The exception as well, when it comes to taking the art. Um, and yeah, and I, and I think it's a, I think it's what's called an apex fallacy. It's a, it's a an apex fallacy is a phenomenon where people kind of look at the top and then they, they, they make the judgment based on the very top of the pyramid. Mm. Um, I'll give you another example of a sociological apex fallacy um, is when you get people talking about how um, we live in a patriarchy because 90% of CEOs are male, hmm. right? So therefore men have this huge advantage because you're looking at the top, like you're looking at literally the very top, you could have an organization with, with 50,000 people and you're looking at the person at the very top of it. And you're saying, ah, most of them are male and therefore this, no one is looking and saying, okay, in any country, in any city, who are the majority of homeless people? Yeah, men, men, right? Always. Okay. Who, kills who are the majority the of? Yeah. Exa exactly, right? But it's an apex fallacy. People are just looking at the top, and then off the top, they're judging that. So people do the same in something like music, and you just look at the top and like, whoa, okay, the top musicians are very, very wealthy, and maybe, maybe they don't need, maybe they don't need any more money in the way that people <laughs> sort of put it, right? Uh, they've are oh, this person's already made like fifty million dollars, like they're good, but for each person like that, there's another, there's another 10,000 musicians <laughs> who have not made a hundred or $50 million. Yeah. Or even the guy at actually, the top, it's like, he, do you know how much work he had to go through to even get yes. to that level? They don't show the yeah, yeah, yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. They only show I the mean, just reel. someone having money doesn't mean that it's okay to rob them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Having money doesn't mean I it's okay bad. to rob somebody to begin with. <laughs> Personally speaking. But, but, but as well, just, just, I, I'm just talking about the way people kind of justify it in their heads. So trying to, give a kind of different yeah. perspective as an, or, as or an actual whole, artist. Even that whole gender thing, you know, it's funny that the usually the people who I found online who are the most righteous about sexism, racism, they're usually the ones who are the most obsessed with race mm -hmm. and sex. Like, yes. for example, I watched, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I watched the latest Spider-Man movie, which is freaking amazing, okay. <laughs> 10 out of 10. And nice. one of the reviews, I remember seeing this review of this lady and basically her biggest complaint were there weren't enough women in the movie or something like that and okay and it's like hang on a sec so you're watching this movie you're ignoring the writing the acting that everything that goes behind this movie and you're just mm -hmm. looking at what's the penis vagina ratio nah too high mate and then yeah. they put the 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 yeah they lower they lower the the ranking mm. so it's just yeah what, what well, do you think you're, you're, you're always gonna find oh sure um sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you no no no, no. I'm, um I'm, yeah, no, it's it's something I think about. I've thought about a lot. And the thing is, you know, we all we, we all know what confirmation bias is, but there's also I don't know the name of it, but there is certainly a psychological concept where you find what you're looking for. Yeah, that's the confirmation right. Bias. So if you already, yeah, confirmation bias is is, is part of. It. I think I think it's a bit and deeper than that though. The, it's like there's cognitive dissonance where you unconsciously mm, ignore everything that conflicts your idea. So these mm. two kind of play. Yeah. Together. But let, let's say you wanted to, um, let's say you wanted to buy a particular model of car or van. Right. And you're doing a lot of research and you'll suddenly start seeing that car around a lot more. You'll see it on the road. Like I had this, I, I bought a van 10 years ago 
and I was doing loads of research on different vans. And, and I suddenly, like, I became super hyper aware and conscious of vans. So like every time I was like, before I, I, you know, I, I, you see vans here and there, but I never noticed like the ratio of them compared to cars. Or, oh, that's that model and this model and this model, and this is the most popular color wow. and this one yeah. and that, but I just became hyper conscious of it. So this, you get this with a lot of uh, activist types, right? So whether it's about uh, race, racial issues or sex issues or gender, what, whatever it is, they're attuned, they're hyper, hyper attuned to that on a daily basis. They're walking around the day with a filter on trying to find examples of to, to justify their worldview. Mm -hmm. And so they'll see that or they'll experience something and it's like, Oh, oh that was sexism. Oh, that was sexism too. Oh, they, they can't just watch yep. a movie like a normal human yeah, being. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you or I <laughs> watch Spider-Man. Yeah. You or I watch right Spider-Man and we're literally just like watching Spider-Man and we're not thinking of like, exactly. I'm not sitting there. I'm not sitting there counting the amount of black characters, or the amount of women, isn't it? Or the, <laughs> <laughs> but then someone who's got that wiring, they're literally sitting there and they're counting in their head. They're, they're, and even maybe so I've even seen some of these uh, sort of so-called feminist entertainment critics where they even monitor the amount of time um, women are on screen, not just how many women are there, but how much time they're on screen and how much wow. time they spend talking about different subjects. Um, how it, so and I'm like, you dude, you life like this, man. It's just give no, me a headache. It, like, do, wow. do you know what it? I'll, OK, I'll give you I'll give you the perfect analogy, I think, for it. Um, so in every sport, so imagine watching a sport, whether it's football or basketball or rugby or whatever, okay, and you're just watching the sport for entertainment versus you are the person who is counting the number of assists, passes, shots on goal, um, penalties, right? The person, the statistician, right? The, the person keeping the stats. So most people just watch a movie to enjoy it or listen to music to enjoy it. But then you have other people who are there, like, then they've got their, they've got their scorecard. And they're literally counting, keeping track of time, keeping track of numbers, whatever. So they're, they're not even in it for the same thing as the vast majority of watchers. And th these people shouldn't be reviewers because they're not there to actually enjoy the movie or the video game or the piece of music. They're there to try to find what's wrong with it. it. They can't no, enjoy no. it for just the experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and that, I'd that, say that with even, many of these people. Yeah, even, sorry, in the, even in the gaming community, I kind of find that like that mm -hmm. PC master race, like they only care about the technicalities of yes. PC is the best because of A, B, and Z. It's like, yeah, but you don't have God of War or like, you know, whatever yeah. exclusive console game there is. And it's the same yeah. sort of attitude, this elitist attitude where they'd be like, oh, you console peasants, we're the master race. <laughs> and I see the same, like it's funny, but at the same time, this attitude comes across in all different communities, you know, and it's, just, it's hard to ignore the patterns. Mm. And, I, and I think it, yeah. And I, th I think it, it goes across life in general as well, you know? Um, and I think that's why it's hard for people like that to just, yeah. Just cut out for a bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's good. saying your internet's a bit weak. That's what it says on my screen. I don't know. Yeah. It's a... I live in a pretty rural area, so this is the, the best we're going to have. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What, what were you saying? Um, I, okay. I, I, the, the last thing I was saying was, um, I was saying that that sort of attitude also extends across people's lives. And so that's why when you get people with those kind of mentalities or ideologies and philosophies, it can be very exhausting to be around them because it's not fun because they can't just laugh at jokes and enjoy life and mm -hmm. experience things normally. Everything has to fall into their sort of activism or their ideology and be over analyzed and they can't just they can't just chill out and be pleasant and why do you think this has reached such a peak today because i feel like that polarization and divisiveness is is as intense as i've experienced in my lifetime i'm sure maybe mm. there are previous times in history where it'd be quite similar i don't know i wasn't alive but something i've noticed that mate people are so polarized today families are going against each other more than ever before. Uh, why, mm -hmm. why do you think this is? I think it's a lot of reasons. I think it's quite deep, actually. Um, I think it's a very multifaceted analysis. I think that a lot of the communitarian and structural bonds that hold people together have been 
greatly eroded, particularly in the modern Western world over the last maybe five to six decades. I think it's been a relatively slow process, but I think that we are seeing a lot of the culmination of that. Um, I think that another big factor, again, in the modern West is that we don't have as many problems as we used to. Life has become easy. The genuine struggle of day-to-day -day survival is gone for the vast majority of people, right? You, you're you not there. But before, human beings used to constantly live in fear of famine, pestilence, war, invasion, all of these things, like wild animals, just, just fighting against the elements, fighting against nature. Now we have the opposite problem. Life is too easy, right? More people are dying of obesity than of starvation. More, wow. you're, you're getting, right? you're, you're getting more, yeah, you're getting more, um, you, I because people have this idea that some people have this naive idea that, um, you know, life should not involve hardship and struggle, hmm. which is really wrong, right? You don't want life to be so hard and there's so much struggle that it's just brutal and people are dying young and it's horrible to live. Like, you know, we've, we've been there and we've generally gotten through that in these countries, in Australia, UK, mm -hmm. Canada, Western Europe, USA, like we we've gotten through that in a pretty fast amount of time, actually, may I add, you know, in a century, For we've sure. really surpassed that. But now I think people are having this sort of existential crisis to some degree and to, to varying degrees as well, mm. where it's like, okay, we need, we need a problem. We need a struggle. We need a fight. We need a battle. We need something to be anxious about. We need something to be worried about whatever. And I think that people, I think there are people who literally create problems because they want to have, and, and maybe for most people, it's not conscious, but they want to have like some battle, some resistance, something to fight against. And you can have this in both, um, in positive and, and negative ways. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you want to be healthy, physically healthy, mentally healthy, spiritually healthy relationships, all of that, you have to actively push against a lot of the current flow of modern life. A, a perf an, an easy, ex obvious example is going to the gym, mm. right? If, if, if my ancestors were to see me going to the gym, and what I'm doing, they, they'd be baffled. They'd be confused. Uh, what, what on earth are you doing? Why are you expending all of this energy, like lifting things up and putting them down and lifting things up and, and running, running on a machine and whatever. And it's like, well, I need to artificially create hardship just to keep my body healthy. Cause if I just live the typical sedentary lifestyle and I just sit here in this chair and eat whatever food I want delivered to my house and do this. And then you end up fat, you end up unhealthy, you end up in a bad mental state, all of that. You have to go out of your way to actually make life a little bit harder these days. Mm -hmm. And so I think there are positive ways of doing that, but there's also negative ways. And I think that's where you get this, um, you know, the hypersensitivity, whether you're talking microaggressions and safe spaces and trigger warnings and words of violence, and we must fight these people and those people, like all, all that woke stuff, right? Mm -hmm. There's no, there, there's a reason there's no woke ideology in developing countries. No. Right. There's a reason I, there's that's only something two... that I noticed, uh, mm -hmm. traveling around. It's only yes. the Western first world countries that are the Absolutely. most social justice warrior and the Absolutely. most depressed as well. Mm -hmm. and ironically. Most depressed. Like it's yes. like life is so good here in Australia that people are jumping off bridges. Like how, Absolutely. That, and I understand like, it's crazy if you zoom out, but it also makes sense because like mm -hmm. all those things that you're talking about, people, yeah. mental health has gone down the drain. They're not taking care of their physical body. They're not putting themselves in challenging mm -hmm. positions. Or maybe in some mm -hmm. cases, people putting themselves in too much of a challenging position where it, life just crushes them, you know? Yeah. And, and, but, but, and then it comes back to the thing I was saying before about the, the, commun the community support. You know, so one thing that certainly absolutely used to bond people and still does, and whether or not someone, you know, I don't care whether someone listening to this believes it or not, but religion, mm -hmm. okay. Religion bonds people. It gives people purpose. It gives people meaning, gives people a blueprint for life. It strengthens 
family community structures, gets pe- lets people know their neighbors, gives people a higher power to look up to and gives them rules and guidelines on how to live their life. Now, whether or not someone listen, listening to this personally believes in believes in God or in any particular religion is not relevant to the facts I just laid out. Reli- religion does that. Religious attendance and adherence and having a congregation, whether you're um, a Muslim going to mosque or a Jewish person going to synagogue or a Christian going to church, whatever, when that's together, it gives people a common purpose, gives people a bond. It lets people even just know each other, right? We, we're very fragmented now for all the uh, connection that we have with uh, social media and all of that. I believe that people are more fragmented and isolated on, and on a real level than they previously were on average, you see this at the family level, you see it at the friendship level, you see this at the uh, neighbor level. I mean, not so long ago, it would have been normal to know everybody who lives on your street, yeah. right? You know, you know everybody who lives on your street, your kids can even just go out and uh, they're just in the neighbor's house or whatever. Whereas now, I mean, <clears throat> you know, most people don't know, most people don't know their neighbors. <laughs> like they, 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 yeah. ju- they just don't. Um, there's communities and pockets and areas where they do, but it's totally normal now to live in, <clears throat> whether you're in a house, you're in a block of apartments or whatever, and you don't even know the people who are living in physical proximity to you, let alone be able to hang out with them or trust them or leave your kid with them mm-hmm. or whatever it is. And, and all that used to just be the norm. It's still the norm in lots of places in the world, but I think it's hard to quantify. <clears throat> I want to let me, I want to come back to that word quantify in a second. I think it's hard to quantify the value of all of that, but it is deep and it's meaningful and it's important. Coming back to that word quantify, as I said, it something kind of went off in my head. And I think that another thing that's flowed down from this, and I don't think I've ever made this point before, but I think we, we also live in this time where people think that if you can't kind of like directly measure something or do some kind of scientific peer reviewed study for it or something, then it's not, it's not valid or it doesn't exist. Do you see what I mean? So with all these things I'm saying, I don't know how you would measure these things or you'd put a value on it. Um, but it, it's important. Um, I feel the same thing, you know, like with all the, with all the masking, right? Like all the masks mm-hmm. that people have been wearing over the past two years, right? There's a huge downside to all of that, right? Because there's a lot of value as a human being, as a social, a social species, being able to see people's faces, smile at people on the street, see people's mouths moving, just like on a daily basis. Again, I don't know how to quantify that. I can't, I can't pull up a study showing that, oh, there's a 23, there's a 43% increase in happiness when you smile. I, I don't, I don't know the numbers, but we all know this is true. Mm-hmm. We know that it's nice to be in an environment where you can see people's faces and you can see people laughing and smiling. And you have all these subtle communication cues that are based around the human face. And so when you cover, you cover all of that up, even, even us on this podcast, I I've just, I've just reduced our communication ability, right? <laughs> yeah. This reduced, isn't, this isn't right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It's harder to, it's harder to hear me. You can no longer tell what is he, is he, is he smiling? Is he joking? Is he, you, you lose all that, all that subtlety. And also just being able to like recognize, even just recognizing each other and knowing who people are like you can walk around the street like if you're i don't know what it's like where you are but if you're in an environment where like everyone's got their faces covered then it's weird i mean you, you don't um <laughs> like you don't even really know who people are if there, there's something it takes people away from each other and i think that also leads into the leads into the polarization and the division and the suspicion and the hostility especially when you couple that with the notion that people are wearing these masks under the, under the, uh, the idea that other people are potentially diseased and mm-hmm. could, could make them sick and could potentially make them die. Like that's what the whole thing's about. So people have been trained in the past two years, especially people have been trained to see each other as threats, right? That's mm-hmm. what the whole thing is about, right? Your, your, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, your friend, the shopkeeper, everyone you see could make you sick and could kill you. I mean, theoretically, that's always been true. (laughs) Always, yeah, driving a car. (laughs) Yeah, like statistically, there's always been truth in that. Yeah, you could walk past someone in the street or someone in the store or someone in the post office, and they could potentially um, be carrying some disease that makes you sick, and then you pass it on to someone. But but we never used to think like that. 
None. Now it's been put into the conscious so, so deep and people are attacking each other and being blamed for this and they're scapegoating and there's this and that. So when you take a society that's already fragmented and polarized from previous uh, events that have happened or whatever, and then on top, you throw this level of fear and hysteria <clears throat> and suspicion onto them, then I think that's how you end up where we are right at this moment in time as we as we record this um i i think people have been so far removed from the normal normal healthy human condition well, health is another word that's been completely bastardized because <laughs> now it's just in relation to this it, one thing but if you look if you think about health holistically yeah. like what health actually means it's not just as simple as do you have a virus or not like that's no. not what you, like, health you, is even separating physical health and mental health is a, is a big fallacy in my opinion because they, they they feed into each other you know you mm -hmm. physically lifting weight is going to improve your mental health and you improving mm -hmm. your mental health is somehow going to inspire you to probably be more active and yeah you know, i mean look our, our, our bodies are integrated you know your your yeah. brain is not detached from the rest of your body right like we are you're, you're, it's all it's all integrated exactly like i'm so right now it's like, this is my brain doing this it's not my fingers <laughs> yes exactly yeah it's both it's both, right? it's, both. It, it, it's, it's both yeah it's like that, that we're, we're interconnected so i think when I, I agree with you totally when people talk about physical health and mental health it's talked about like it's these two completely different separated right. like things. independent things yeah and one of the best reasons for people to eat good food and to, to exercise regularly and to do that is to keep their brain also functioning properly. And that's not even to talk about the endorphins and everything like that. So yeah, I think, again, I think things have been so fragmented and isolated and everything's being looked at through such a, you know, cold, hard scientific lens that people have forgotten about the importance of just like, <laughs> the, the, the real kind of basic human stuff like smiling at each other and hugging people and you yeah. know laughing and joking and you know um Going and when outside, people right getting vitamin mm -hmm. d that, that never yeah yeah, yeah. And, and when people do that you know community bonds are really important because i mean anyone who's faced isolation over especially over this time period i mean you'll you'll know the effect that it has on you and oh, it again, makes you go we, crazy. We, it makes you go mad. We, we already know this. I mean, if somebody is already in prison, someone's already committed a bad crime and you're in prison, what do they do if they want to punish you extra hard? They put you mm. in solitary. So you can't even hang out with your other fellow criminals. Away from all the monsters. And that breaks people. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, that, and that breaks people down. And so imagine you've taken hundreds of millions, billions of people potentially, and you've thrown them into various states of isolation. Um, no wonder we've got some degree of psychosis. And I mean, it was, to me, it was predictable. I was saying it from the very beginning, like, uh, well, this is going to happen if you, if, yeah. if you do this to people, especially for a prolonged period of time. And sometimes they might not even know when it's going to end and there's no promises and the goalposts keep moving yeah. and you're keeping them in this constant st state of fear. And then to train, teaching them to fear other people. Um, it's not, it's not good and it's very anti-health and anti-human as far as far as i'm concerned yeah well it's funny because i well it's funny in a very sad way but seeing like anytime you walk into a shop the first sign that you'll say see is your health and safety is our number one concern and i always laugh out mm. loud at that because that's clearly not true like even if mm. everything that they're doing is for our health and safety again i don't see the consistency of everything else like why would you shut no. down gyms why would you keep all the bottle shops open, McDonald's and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. If you really want people to be healthy, why not encourage people to go outside and get some vitamin D? But the thing is the people making these policies, I can't help but notice are not healthy themselves. I mean, you can physically see that. You can literally see that with your own two eyes. I'm there watching these people and I'm like, none of you even lift. Like not, can you guys oh. do a, can, can any of you do a pull up? Can any of you do a pull-up? Can ever no, honestly, like yeah, I'm not I even trying to be. That, that's why I'm, I'm but... laughing at it because it's so true. It's just like ridiculous. I, I, yeah, I'm at this so... point now, Zuby, where I can only laugh at these things. Whereas before, yeah, you have to... I'd get so because oh, yeah, laugh, yeah, yeah, keeps my sanity. I have to laugh. You yeah, know? And it's absolutely. funny that that point that you just made. I'd noticed that the people who are the most righteous with this mm -hmm. of like you mm -hmm. have to do this, they never cared about health prior to that. 
I ne- no. would would that same person who cares so much about your health and safety would they tell their fat friend, "Hey, mate, you're getting a bit fat"? Of course there? not. No, never. No. That would never no. happen because it's rude, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's about health and safety. You know, I was yeah. telling you before. I'm not gonna say any names, but let's say a certain family member. He invited me to dinner. I haven't talked to him in like two years. He invited me to dinner through my mum, and then she, he found out that I haven't I haven't got you know, jab. Oh boy. And then he just invited me to dinner. This is my own flesh and blood, man. Yeah. And that that shit really hurt. And it was sad, man. Cause I'm like, what, what the fuck? This, that's never happened to yeah. me before. And the fact that it was a family member, it's like, mm. oh man. And, and this has happened. Yeah, and this has happened to millions of people now and, oh, and all over the world and all these different areas, different countries, different cities. And this is why I call it a mass psychosis because you have millions of people behaving in ways that they never did prior to this, mm-hmm. right? And I, I, I wish I could show some people, I wish I could go back to 2019 and show some people the 2021 versions of themselves. Mm. I don't think they would believe it, right? Because prior to, literally prior to 2020, nobody behaved like this at all. Viruses were always there. People were always getting sick, going to hospital. People were dying every single day. The, it, it, this has always been the case. Like all, all of this stuff, it's not new. You know, vaccines are not new. You've you had the flu going around killing tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people every single year. You've had all kinds of diseases, all kinds of things, whatever. What is new is the behavior. So I'm very sensitive to when people start doing and saying things that they never used to, whether this is people suddenly saying that there are infinite genders, whereas 10 years ago they were only saying that there were two i mean okay wait okay that's different what's happened here right 2018 2019 nobody you know like we we got sick all like we we all get sick like we get colds we get flus like pe- people get sick but the notion that um you know was has anyone have you have you ever heard of anyone being uninvited from a dinner or a party or being pushed out of whatever because they, they didn't get a flu jab never have, have you ever even had, was it even normal for people to ask each other if they've had a flu jab? Or, even, or, was... or even if they're sick, like, hey, I, just before I invite you to dinner, are you sick right now? Take a like, test. They, they yeah. never, no. No, 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 not, not just are you sick, but also like take a test, prove oh, to me. Right, of course. Prove to me that you're not test, sick. But even if you take the test and you prove you're not sick, then if you also haven't had a shot, then you're not, that's all. It, it, like, it doesn't make sense. It's a, it's, it's, it's a psychosis because it's not, it's not logical. It's not rational. It's not reasonable. And the people who are doing it don't realize that, like they've created their own faulty logic, which they think makes sense, but it doesn't, right? So for example, this situation, this personal situation you went through, I I will assume that even if you took a negative test, they'd they'd be uncomfortable. Yes, 100%. They'd be more comfortable, think about this, they'd be more comfortable if you took the jab and didn't have proof that you don't have the virus than if you proved you don't have the virus. How is that remotely logical? It makes, it makes no the, what's sense. What's crazy especially is in this... that these guys are very intelligent. Well, at least when it mm-hmm. comes academically, of course, those are two different intelligences sure. and they're very educated people. So it's like, to me, it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I, I get surprised when I see someone who's so educated, mm. but yet they just lack that kind of common sense or decency. To there, there's no correlation. There's no correlation yeah. at all. This is something I've really learned. There's no correlation between what we typically think about of intelligence and immunity to uh, brainwashing or yeah. just going along with complete stuff that makes that makes no sense. Um, I think is, it's really it is, about personality yeah. types. I think it's about yeah. personality types more than it's about uh, intelligence. Yeah, you know, uh, even I remember being in high school, so I was like a genius at maths and all that kind of stuff. And all my friends nice. would just automatically assume like, oh, you're so smart, you're a genius. And I'm like, I am in my own way, but there were so many other things where I wasn't smart, like my mm. social intelligence, maybe my, my wit and all these kind of things, which my friends excelled at, but they mm. put themselves down of like, I'm stupid. I belong mm. in the retard maths class <laughs> and you're a genius because you know algebra. And, and even at that stage, I'm like, just because I know algebra doesn't make me necessarily intelligent. It just means that I'm good at maths. That's that's all it means. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And another thing that's been missing through all of this is just um, you know, human decency for one, but also just humility. Mm. You know, we're we're living in a pandemic of people who can't say I was wrong. 
Yeah, pride, I was going to say, pride, pride is the biggest issue that I see plaguing the yeah. world today. Pride. Yeah, yeah. People can't, people can't just to say, you know what? I was wrong or, okay, new information came out. I'm changing my position, mm -hmm. whatever. People are still, people are still making decisions based off, off of information that was around in like March, 2020. Hmm. Right. Like wow. they haven't updated their software since March, 2020. They're still running under, you know, you've still got millions, hundreds of millions of people out there who think that if you get the Rona, that there's like a 50% chance you're going to hospital or like a 10% chance you're going to die. Like this is, com that's complete. That's out by like a gigantic magnitude. Like it's by several factors, but there's people still to this day who believe that there's people who think that if you take the jab, you, you can't get it and you can't spread. Like, right. And you're a selfish piece of shit. who doesn't care about humans. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but it doesn't even, it, it makes, it makes no sense. So, okay. Maybe this time last year, people would have thought, oh, yeah, okay, you know, it's called, if you're going to call it a vaccine, then typically it inoculates you against it. You know, you, you, it's extraordinarily rare for you to contract it. And mm -hmm. you, and I, I've you gotten don't, yellow fever. I've gotten, hep, I've gotten quite a, yeah, quite yeah, a few. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And, 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 majority and people just have. for those listening who might misinterpret mm -hmm. things, this whole conversation we're having right now is not even necessarily about pro or anti-vax. I think that's actually a red no. herring. See, I, not I, part, I, not I, part of, it shouldn't even be part <laughs> of the thing, you know? Tom, Tom, I almost want to admonish you for making that caveat because we shouldn't have to. Exactly. And this again shows how people's brains have been broken. Why should you have to put that disclaimer? Exactly. This shows I, how just, dis this shows how uh, yeah. people's brains have been broken because mm -hmm. nothing we have said has even suggested that that's the case. But people are so yeah. freaking like jacked up and crazy now that they're just seeing things in this binary. Right, they're blinded. It's like it's a binary. It's like you're this or you're that. So, no you know, you shouldn't. Have, yeah. yeah, just like you shouldn't have to have this discussion. Oh, you know, I'm not racist, but you know, I oh, wish. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not anti. It's, it's like you should not. I'm not, I I, I, I'm not against science, but it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. so. I, I don't even do disclaimers because I'm like, what do you? I'm not. I don't give a disclaimer. Like, of course, I'm not anti science. What does that even mean? Nobody is anti science. That's not even a thing. Right? Yeah, it so doesn't exist. Are... Yeah. Like science is one <laughs> constant body of knowledge, and it never changes. Like. I've, I've never, I've never like doctors come across used to anybody. say camel cigarettes, good for your health. Like that was, I've never that, come was, across, that, was that was science, bro. <laughs> I've never come, come across anybody, it, but, but people do this in different areas, right? You know, people call, there's people who call go around calling people climate deniers. <laughs> oh, that guy's like, he's a climate denier. I'm like, he, wait, say that again. Like, he didn't, who denies the climate? <laughs> I don't even know anyone who denies that the climate changes. Huh? Yeah. Right. So people yeah. will even say people go around and say climate change denier. Who, who, who on this earth does not believe that the climate changes? That's not a thing. This is the thing. People create these like straw man enemies. And it's like, that's not even a position. No one is anti-science. No one doesn't believe that climate change happens. People, people disagree on how much of it is caused by humans versus caused by natural factors and what should potentially be done about it. But I've never come across anybody who, certainly no one who denies the climate, who denies that climate just exists, let alone who denies it changes. But people like to throw labels at things. And then it means you don't even need to engage with the person or with the conversation or with the argument. If someone can just go, ah, well, Tom, Tom is a climate denying anti-science, but then everything else that comes out your mouth, they can just reject it. <laughs> oh, you know, it's just call someone anti-vax and now you can just forget, forget everything they're saying. Yeah. They just hate that. It would be like calling someone who's vegan anti-food, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like, oh, he's, vegan. he's, oh, he's, he's, he's anti-food. Like he, he just hates food. So it's like, well, no, listen to what he's saying. Listen to, like, you know, oh, he, he doesn't man. hate food. He eats food. He, he's, he's, he's pro food. He's just got like a nuanced position on this thing. Or, which, or sometimes you, know, you might not even express your position on a certain topic and just, yeah just mere association. Yeah. Like, I remember once, uh, like I've said this a couple of times on the podcast, so I'll just briefly say it, but I, I interviewed a Christian for the first time in my life and I got videos made about me, Zuby, saying that I'm pro-fascism, I'm anti-LGBT, even though fascism. we didn't, yeah, fascism. if that was crazy, yeah, exactly. People don't okay. actually know what fascism is. Well, well, you're interviewing another Christian right now, so we'll see what happens from this. Oh, you, oh there you go. 
I wasn't even complete. I kind of <laughs> guessed, but I, di I didn't completely know. So yeah, I'm going to get this again. But you know, I'm, I'm a little bit used to it now. I'm kind of expecting it now. It's probably why. Are, are you not allowed thing. to interview Christians now? Is this a thing? Nah, because well, apparently to certain new age people, they believe that all religions lead to the same mountaintop, except for Christianity. If you if you have anything to do with Christianity, you're you're a you're a bigot. You're a fascist. You're you really? hate. You're a gay bash. Is that an Australian thing? Uh, most of my views actually come from the US. So this is US. This is from the from the Americas. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And okay. even though like I didn't even talk about any of these subjects, but it, just, <laughs> it just goes to show the hysteria and irrationality yeah. that people have of just kind mm. of virtue signaling. And then they don't even understand what fascism means. Like no. there was a protest the other week. It was like pro vaccine mandate. Mm. and, and anti-fascism and i was like wait 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 isn't that an oxymoron wait 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 so you're anti-fascism which is the government forcing their will upon the public but you're yeah. for this thing being mandated and mm -hmm. forced upon people's will so it's like it just goes to show again that people don't actually really think about the words that they're, they're saying you know no there's been a lot of dumbing down of society and dumbing down of conversations and yeah, especially philosophically you know, right Absolutely. And I think part of it is this obsession with labels. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, there's the, the idea that one word can, there, there is no nuanced and complex and human position, really, that can be summed up in a word. Mm. There isn't, right? If someone says like, okay, that guy's a conservative, it doesn't actually tell you that much doesn't tell you much at all in itself. If someone says, oh, that guy's, that guy's, that guy's a liberal, or um, even that person is a, if, okay, if someone says like that person's a, a Christian, then it, it, it gives you like a very basic, like, okay, that means this person believes that uh, Jesus Christ is the son of God who died for sin. Like that's, that's pretty much all you can infer. Yes. Right. They vary, that, that's really Christians very, very different. Obviously, very wildly, like, widely. Like Protestantism, very, Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, it, et cetera. Hundreds, right? Um, so I think part of it is, is these labels, even things like pro -vax, like what does pro -vax mean? Does that mean what does that actually mean? Vaxes? So wait, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm, it's not even that I'm against this particular vaccine, mm -hmm. just, just to say, it's just that mm -hmm. I'm holding off. I just don't want to do it right now. The fact that I'm getting forced to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel like if it was the opposite, if it was like encouraged and not mandated at all, I might actually mm -hmm. get it. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the fact that it's forced and it's like, and it's not that I'm anti it just to make it clear. Yeah. It's more that. I just want to wait for my options, I guess. Maybe I want to wait for the better vaccine, you know? Yeah, even, even, and even, even, even if that, you were, I'm anti even, because even, of that. even if, even if you were, even if you were anti this one or anti this one for yourself mm -hmm. or anti this mm -hmm. one for children or whatever, does that mean you're anti it in, in general? No. So this is what I'm saying. So people like to have like a one word label and then just kind of throw it out there. And it's like, well, wait, okay, let's go into this. Like, this is a, this is like a complicated position, right? So am I... You know, are you pro or anti chemotherapy? Uh, well, depends, I right? Do it. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it depends, right? You I know? probably you... wouldn't do it, but you know. Well, 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 what, what if, what if you had cancer and that would, clear, and, and that would cure it? I, I guess so, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, it depends. You know, I get, are... It has to happen to me, and I gotta, you know, weigh yeah. out my options. Yeah. Am I pro or anti surgery? It's like, well. It, Depends. Depends. I don't think you. I don't think if you're perfectly healthy and there's nothing wrong with you that you should just go under a knife and let someone start cutting you up. Um, but I'm very pro surgery for people who need surgery. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. So th th this is the thing. So people kind of just throw these labels out there, and it's like, well, what does that even? What does that mean? I think labels are just labels are largely used to stop thinking. Um, mm -hmm. They have a purpose, and it's it's hard to. We can't totally avoid them. But if you're trying to describe someone's position or someone's belief or whatever, to be honest, it's the same with everything, you know, like if, if someone says, oh, you know, I, I am black. It's like, okay, how much does that, how much does that tell someone about me? You know, hmm. like it means that if we were sitting in a room together and it was just us and someone said, okay, it's the black guy, then, okay, you know, it's this guy or someone says, well, okay, it's this. But in terms of like my character or personality or beliefs or experiences or background even where i'm from it doesn't tell you anything i no, could be from no, i could be from a like a hundred different countries 
<laughs> wait, wait, wait. I I, I, I'm just thinking now because like you're Christian and you're black. So I'm like, those people who are going to make those videos, it's like, are they going to give you extra brownie points because you're black? <laughs> do, do I get, do I get some points for it? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know how it, I don't know, I don't know how, how it works either. This all. Yeah. I don't know how it all works, but yeah, I think, I think the obsession with labels is probably at this point doing more harm than good, especially because the lab labels we use tend to be very binary, right? It, tend, it tends to be very binary. It's like this or that, right? So people talk about, um, you know, pro this or anti this, and it's like, well, there's a lot of space in that middle. <laughs> yeah, a lot. What, yeah, what, yeah. what about if I think, what if, okay. So I don't know. I am, I am pro exercise. That doesn't mean I think Fascist. people should be. Doesn't, <laughs> does, that mean I think it, does that mean I think it must be mandated, right? And yeah. you should go to prison if you don't do it? No, no. But then this is the same logic people are applying to people who are like, you know what? Like, I think people should be like able to make their own medicine. And it's like, okay, well, so you're so you're against it. It's like what? Yeah. No, monster. like, yeah. what, what do you mean? <laughs> like, it, it, it's weird. It, it, people can't see this huge middle area. And, and the truth is, that's actually where most people lie on most things. Most people are not like on an extreme end of almost anything. Mm -hmm. There are exceptions, which is why they're called extremists. Mm -hmm. But ve very few people are like all the way one thing or the other, you know. Exactly. even even po politically right it's it's rare to, there's 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 no one who is conservative on everything as in they yeah. literally think that nothing nothing should change and like everything like it's everything is just ossified like it's just this yeah. is how it is and that's and, it and the center always changes over time right of course yeah. there's no one who there's no one who's li who's pro progressive on everything like you you literally think that like everything all of our systems and structures and like everything we've done up till now is like we should just blow everything out the water not conserve any of it mm -hmm. and we should change it all right it would be like taking a car and you just just blow the car up and just try to put it it's like well the car is already generally working so yeah sure like okay maybe that can be better we can change that we can fix that so everyone is everyone is like everything <laughs> Everyone is liberal and conservative and progressive. And let me not literally say everyone's everything. That's, that's not correct. But like politically, certainly most people are a combination of all of these things. Yeah, it's like like you, can, you can be, you, also, yeah, like, you know, it can absolutely. be a leaning, but, and you can also be like, you could be like really conservative and like in an area or in some areas and then very, very liberal in others. Right. I'd say, I'd say I'm actually quite like that. Like there's some stuff I'm like, very conservative on in in terms of a political and then there's some stuff i'm just like whatever like y'all yeah. you, you do i don't care like you you do whatever right Wouldn't that apply to like um, technology let's say like uh just the fact of video games let's say or movies is constantly improving over time would that be considered mm. a liberal or progressive idea yeah i mean it, it, the, i mean the, the most staunch conservative idea would be like well we need to get 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 rid of it all we need to get you yeah. know all or these keep everything exactly the, it, as yeah, or, or, yeah, or just yeah. yeah exactly you would have stopped st come, gone back to the 70s and the 80s and just like no we're gonna just blockade this thing we don't want any advancement we don't want any but then also you know if say, say you're moving into um a world of ai and robots and automation and all that right would you want to progress to a level progress to a level where like human beings are obsolete Mm. maybe even uh someone who considers themselves very progressive and even very technologically progressive might be like all right but there, there's a there's a there's a point where we shouldn't yeah we Elon shouldn't Musk go had past that, had that conversation <laughs> yeah like well, okay maybe we shouldn't go past this point yeah. because we're going to end up rendering ourselves completely useless which is then going to have all those problems so you know there, there's always a balance and you, you you also need both i think that's another thing that people don't really like to admit is that you need you, you need these different ideas and philosophies out there because in any society, there's always going to be things that are worth preserving and conserving and maintaining. Yes. And there's always going to be things that should be changed. Yes. Now we may disagree on what those changes should be or what those things are or where the boundaries lie, which is pretty much the whole political back and forth. But again, the people who like want to 
you know, the 1% of people on each side who are like, no, nope, everything must go like all the way here. They're generally thought of as being kooks for a reason because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not, it's not a reasonable nuanced position of like saying, okay, not nothing we're doing is working. We should just abolish the whole thing, blow it all up. It's like, well, if you do that, then it, it's also an extremely arrogant position. Cause it's this idea that like all the, all the billions of people before us for all these thousands and thousands of years were wrong on everything. Yeah, like, yeah, that, they, they, that all our ancestors not, got was... everything wrong. Like they got it completely wrong and we're just so magically intelligent and enlightened that we know more than everybody who came before us and all, all the stuff they've created, all the books they've written, everything. Like imagine if you were to just take, okay, you know what? Any book written before 1990, Let's just get rid of it. Oof. That'd be crazy. We'd lose the whole foundation, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you, you lose the whole the whole foundation. Everything before Isaac, this time Isaac period. Newton, he's gone. Yeah, yeah just get <laughs> rid of it. Tesla. They were, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they were all sexist and racist anyway. Just just get That's rid of true, all of yeah. them. Screw them. Yeah. Tear down all the statues, <laughs> blow up, burn all the books, get rid of it. Like that would be crazy, you know? So yeah. Well, it's, it's like what you're talking about, the nuance, you know, because the human being, at least, you know, from what I understand, is that the human being is both wretched and divine. You know, mm -hmm. we have attributes of being something better and greater than ourselves, but we're also tied to our passions, you know, and I think in a lot of worldviews, whether you're looking at, let's say, atheism or the materialist paradigm, where they basically look at humans as just bacteria on a floating ball of empty nothingness, like there's absolutely mm -hmm. nothing special about us. And so the, I can I kind of see the anti-humanism movement. Mm. And of course, it's like the, the new age view, which is that everything is divine and we're perfect there's no such thing as evil you know and but they're kind of like two sides of the same coin i yes. feel because if everything is god or if nothing is god mathematically it's the same thing right yeah and you know i also think there's there's a lot to you know i i, I love these conversations this, this conversation is what i <laughs> it's kind of what I, what I what i refer to as mental masturbation which <laughs> means that <laughs> yeah yeah i use that term too actually <laughs> yeah okay where where you know, I love these conversations, but also th there's a, there's a point where you just have to look at what works. Yep. You know, we can have different ideas and philosophies and hypotheses and ideas. And no, when it, when it all boils down, I'm like, okay, what works? Does this, mm -hmm. does this thing work or, or not? Right. We can, we can be very academic and cerebral and think of this and think of that. So but I always ask two questions. Number one, does it matter? Mm -hmm. And number two, does it work? So the, the, the best example to me of um, like super crazy levels of like mental masturbation would, would be even um, debates around how, how, we, how we came to exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whether someone goes from like a purely atheistic perspective of, you know, primordial soup and big bang and, you know, cosmic dust and somehow, you know, pure evolution and that's led us to where we are. Versus someone goes, you know, thinks that there's intelligent design or, you know, the, the world was created by God or another power or whatever. Mm -hmm. Number one, there's, there's no, like, I don't think we can ever know. <laughs> no, so like we can have different ideas and philosophies. Like, and I wasn't there at the time and, of creation. So yeah. No, yeah. No, but, but there's like a level of humility where I have to be like, you know what guys, like none of us freaking know, like we, we don't, we do not. We do not know. And I also don't think we can know. No, know? With so I have, I, I have my beliefs. Mm -hmm. I have my faith. I have my ideas. I have my arguments, but I'm willing to put my hands up and be like, you know what, dude, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what's mm -hmm. at the bottom of the ocean. I don't know this. Like, I don't know. You don't know. None of us know or can know. And also, does it matter? The truth is we're here. <laughs> we are here now. So Welcome. I think what's much more important is how do we, how do we shape our lives and society and family and community to live a happy, healthy life and to make positive progress and to get on with each other and to improve in all these various ways? Like to me, that matters a lot more. I mean, you, you could get into an eight hour debate, you could get into a, an eight day debate on how we got here, but fundamentally it's like, well, we're here. Same with like free will and determinism. You know, people get all like, oh, free will, do we have free will or is everything? Do? It's like, bro, 
does it does it matter? Ultimately, we act like we have free will and we treat other people like we have free will. So based off that. Yeah. What's that paradox? Like, <laughs> like, uh, I, of course, what of, what of do we course, do next? What's that paradox? Like, of course, I believe in free will. I have no choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's like, it's interesting, you know, it can be interesting. It's a great academic, uh, intellectual exercise, but it's kind of like, okay, does. Yeah. You, you get to the point it where it's like, it all right, now this is just, yeah. Like you said, yeah. <laughs> like I, I enjoyed like having these conversations for sure. Oh, same. But I think same. it's in, like you said, it's important to bring it down to reality. So even the whole question of good and evil is just, well, what's your experience? What's, what does history say? There's a lot of mm -hmm. humans who do they have like this transcendent quality of doing good that goes beyond animals, you know, how we care mm -hmm. for other species, et cetera, et cetera. But mm -hmm. there's also acts of just pure evil. You know, it's not always that way because I'm, I'm using an extreme example because some people are just born in a bad situation and in their mm -hmm. mind, they're believing they're doing the right thing, but they're just, mm -hmm. you know, doing horrible acts. But then there are actually pure evil out there. And I think most there's people- There's bad have, out there. There's bad people. Most people- and those who especially have the view of how everything that's going on right now, like, nah, politicians are doing the best that they can. It's our, it's in their intention. Mm. Like these are, and these are smart people and who's, who still believe in that. But then I look at their lives and like you said, it doesn't matter how academic and cerebral you can go with your philosophy and theology. If you haven't experienced pure evil, it's not really going to sink in into your heart. You know what I mean? Like you, I feel like you kind of, I wouldn't wish that because I feel like, Coming across evil is a very traumatic experience in a lot of ways yes. because it shatters your your paradigm of what it is mm -hmm. to be a human. And then you realize, shit, I'm capable of this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's it's, like, it's dark, but it's I think that's dark. also I think that's, that's also how you become a, a good person. You know, I think the best people mm. in the world understand the human capacity for both good and evil on a on a deep basis, yes. including their own capacity for good and evil. I think that's something that's important for every man and woman and perhaps even child if they're old enough to to understand. And it also keeps you it also keeps you in check because you know one thing I think I've really learned over the past 2 years is that there's a lot of stuff that I think prior to this time a lot of people, millions of people just never thought about. No. Um one of the most obvious ones actually is just like mortality. Mm. Right. Like people had, it's very clear that we're living in a time where people are not previously were just not like, they'd never really thought about their own mortality. And then I think a lot of the behavior we are seeing is the result of people suddenly being forced to think about their own and perhaps their loved ones mortality right? Like it, it, they'd never really thought about it before. They'd been kind of living in this land knowing, oh yeah, if, you know, everyone subconsciously knows that people die of and that they're going to die, but they never really thought about like, okay, what does that mean? No. How do I feel about that? How do I handle it? Um, and then also, I think a lot of people have never really thought about, okay, like where are my boundaries? What are my principles? Yeah. What are the, even on a, even on, a, even on a philosophical level, on a political level, I think a lot of people have never really thought, okay, like what is, what is the role of government? You know, like what, what is, what are our human rights? What is crossing the line? What is acceptable? What is not acceptable? What is, you know, um, I think there's probably a big conversation that's going to be happening in, in Australia, for example, over, over the next couple of years, because my understanding is that there isn't actually, it's actually one of the only Western countries that does not have a human, human rights charter, I believe. No, so, I, well, I, f I feel that I knew that from the beginning and well, yeah, you but, but, money, but, but, but most people don't. We got the queen on our money. That right there should tell you. <laughs> we don't own our country. And yes, you yeah. can use the, you know, you can theorize and be like, oh, well, technically we have our own government and blah, 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 blah. Mate, mm -hmm. the queen's on our money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That should tell you everything. Like, yeah. we, we don't really run the show. Like, we're not, I don't know. It's different. I've always noticed that with Australia. And I was telling you before we started that before this pandemic, I wanted to get the hell away from Melbourne because I saw it going down a really dark path path especially politically like for example we spent millions of dollars of tax money we i mean the government mm -hmm. to change the male traffic light sign to a female with a dress and <laughs> you know what i mean i have video proof which i'll put on this podcast uh, I've, I've actually heard of that i've actually heard of and that before like, and i i, wait, wait I wanted second. to think it was a joke and then i was like oh wow it's but then real. you'll be it's sexist in and of itself because then you're assuming that a woman has to wear a dress in order to be a woman so again it's kind of like 
the snake eating its own tail like they don't even understand what they're doing mm. and like that it just goes to show like that was one big sign of like oh man this ain't gonna go on good and i see like socialism antifa mm. communism and all this stuff is getting bigger and bigger and bigger especially in melbourne and the, the drug problem here is like one of the worst in australia it's like really mm. dark underworld and again it's one of those things that people don't see because i see i have like certain family members in mind who have this beautiful picture of melbourne best most livable city in the world it's precious mm -hmm. and that all they do is just suck melbourne's dick all the time <laughs> but then they have absolutely no idea of like the, you know they, they have like no criticism or and, and they mm. can't think of something negative to say about it and you got to take it all in it's not about looking at something positive or negative mm. against nuance but i've also let's say i've partied a, a bit in the melbourne underground yeah. i've seen there's oh man it's a dark shit there's like devil's den belly of the beast mm. stuff going mm. on here it, is, it's, it sounds a bit like uh some of the you know some of the uh, so-called progressive cities in the usa yeah um probably maybe not as bad as them but you know your san francisco's and los angeles's and new york cities where there's this yeah, very superficial view that a lot of people have of them of like oh you know they just hear those names and they're like oh you know new york city is great you know san francisco is great whatever and i'm like man there's like a really really dark um underbelly of those societies and their stuff that you can see the path and the direction they're heading on and I don't know if people don't see it. Maybe I think I think it's a combination of not seeing it and denial. Um, and like you said before, I, I think people don't really people don't really like to confront. It's weird. On one hand, people are addicted to negative emotions, especially fear. Mm -hmm. But also, people don't really want to acknowledge evil. You know, people don't really want to acknowledge bad. At the same time, it, it's like this weird cognitive dissonance, maybe where it's like you're you're embracing and addicted to like the fear and the hysteria and the worry and the anxiety but you're also you know blind <laughs> when it comes to like the the dark side of humanity as a whole or the dark side even of like a, a particular area or like a city or whatever it is people just kind of refuse they refuse to see that and by refusing to see it it means that you can't you can't address it either because exactly. or, or and, and people get really uncomfortable if it's brought up or whatever yeah. it is um culture is the same right like uh it, some people find it very difficult to hear maybe a, a criticism that they that their mm. particular culture might have or whatever mm. yeah yeah you know it, it, it's true I, I think maybe for me something that makes some of this easier is that maybe just the way i've grown up you know i've grown up in a range of different countries and cultures and where, where have you grown I, up I'd love yeah to so i mean if you don't mind yeah yeah no problem so so like i said you know i was, I was born in england so i'm from the uk by birth um i Which grew city? up in saudi arabia i was born in luton specifically but um uh, but I, I don't i can't really say i'm from any particular place in the uk yeah um you know i grew up in saudi arabia i lived in saudi arabia for 20 years what? How's um, that? I went to the airport once. <laughs> How was that? Okay. That's more than most people. Saudi Saudi was great. I like Saudi, <laughs> which uh, I, a lot of people don't like that I like Saudi, but I do. Um, you know, my family background's from Nigeria. Both my parents are originally from Nigeria and, you know, I've been over there many times. And then um, when I was in Saudi, I went to an American school. So I was in the American school system up until fifth grade is the reason why I don't even sound British. Yeah, I was going to um, say. Yeah, yeah, and then my biggest American audience, accent. yeah, my biggest audience is also in the USA. So Me I've too. had very USA. heavy exposure. USA. <laughs> so I've had very heavy exposure to those four countries and cultures. And then, you know, beyond that, I've traveled to you know, 36 or 37 different countries. So I don't really have this um, notion of I cannot praise nor criticize anywhere. You know, like yeah. I, there, I've seen the pros and cons and I have praises and criticisms of everywhere that I've been to, whether it's a city or it's a country yeah, or it's same. a culture, I can, I can point out like, you know, people get mad if I say any positive thing about Saudi Arabia, because people want to imagine, you know, again, with this Western arrogance that like, you know, the whole Middle East is just terrible and there's absolutely nothing that they do better or that we could learn from them or whatever. You have to condemn the entire thing as a whole. Right. Mm. And if you even do anything, then you're being a, what's the term people use? People say that I'm a, there's this term I've heard people say about me online, which is that I'm a, oh, what's it? What is it? 
they they call me a what is it ah uh, a Sa- oh um a saudi arabia apologist <laughs> Saudi Arabia That's apologist. Hilarious. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that one around. Oh, Zubi, he's a he's a Saudi he's a Saudi That's Arabia a apologist, <laughs> and it's like right. So I lived in a country for twenty years, and I'm not allowed to say that there's some good things about it. Really? Wow. Like you know, and of course, this is coming from people who've never stepped foot in the country, right? And it's just this is this level of arrogance. It's like, look, there's great things. There's things I like about Saudi. Things I like about the UK, America. Every country, I, I've, there's no country I've been to where I don't have some praises and things where I'm like, okay, that's cool. I like the way that they do that. Cool. It's good. It's cool. positive. And then there's an, also no place where I don't have criticisms too, where I'm like, man, okay, I have heavy criticisms of you know, UK, Canada, Australia, America, Saudi, Nigeria, everywhere. Like there's pros and there's cons. It's not all good. It's not all bad. You experience different places and you come up with a picture of, okay, you know, they could learn this from them. They could learn that from them. And yes. that's just, that's just yes. how it is. You know, it's, it, again, it's, it's, it's nuanced. It's not black and white. It's not good and bad, simple, clear cut, cut and dry. And also when people say that you have to think of, you have to think of how many people you're talking about as well. Mm. You know, if you're talking about a population of tens or hundreds of millions of people, then to just say like, Oh, this whole country or culture or whatever is, this bad thing it's like well that's that's a pretty ignorant and, and arrogant and you know <laughs> one could even say prejudice statement especially if you've never even sure. been there right it's just like you know when you and it doesn't matter which way it runs when people are oh all americans are x all australians are y it's like mm, what do you what are you even talking about like there's no, there's, there's 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 no nuance there, right? It's exactly, just like yeah, it yeah, just goes back to the polarization and you know because what, what you're does. saying it's about you couldn't criticize. Oh no, sorry, you couldn't praise Saudi Arabia without you know getting criticism thrown your way. Mm. I feel like it's almost in a way it's like that here in Australia, but you can't criticize it because then it's like mm. well fucking go off, then leave them. Back yeah. off. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like, I love it, mate. I could write a book on how much I love Australia. Probably yeah. more so than most, like, you know, people who are like really proud of being Australian. But mm-hmm. I'm also aware of the other things. Because I think it's similar yeah. to you, how like I grew up going to uh, South America, Chile all the time. So I had these mm-hmm. two cultures to compare it to. And mm-hmm. like you said, there's, all, there's things that Australia could learn from South America and certain things mm-hmm. that South America can learn from Australia. Uh, yeah. I think like, for example, I appreciate the warmness and passion that uh, Latinos have. Uh, mm-hmm. I just feel like you go out in the street, there's just more life and energy. Yes. And people yeah. here in Australia are very, unless you're like super drunk, but then you don't want mm-hmm. that, you know, go off, back off, that's too much. Yeah. But generally speaking, Australians are very closed off. They don't speak up. It's the same in Britain, the exact same in Britain. I could only imagine, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly the same in the UK. Um, and then, you know, even between Brit- between the UK and the USA, like there's big differences between, and even within the USA, I mean, where are you talking about in the USA? If you go to Texas, it's not like New York. If you go to right, Florida, yeah. it's not like California. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I, I think the, the, the point which we're, which we've probably flogged is that you, you can't just. <laughs> you, you you can't just kind of stick labels on things and think that that's totally accurate or have these false dichotomies and binary views are always going to be missing. You're going to be missing a lot of the gray. You're going to be missing a lot of the detail, a lot of the nuance. And if we want to actually understand the world better and understand each other better and get on with each other better and not be at each other's throats all the time, then we need to be able to see the shades of gray. We need to be able to see the nuance and we need to be able to talk about things without wanting to jump to the name calling and unfair labels and straw man, straw man arguments and all of that stuff. And I think um, it probably doesn't help that it certainly doesn't help that lots of our online communication methods are really not tailored for this because if you want to understand someone and you get want to get to know someone and really understand what they think, you need to have a conversation like we are having right now. That's that's actually what it takes. Um, this exchange would this exchange would not be possible on Twitter, right? We, we, no and it, it would just be it would just be con- confusion 
and you know lack of nuance and this and that it's especially a, it's a war zone at, on twitter it's, it's a war zone especially yeah. when you've also got people watching and you know thousands of other people are throwing in their ideas and misrepresenting you and taking words out pretending you said things that you didn't say or you didn't say things that you said and you just you you just cannot do it um yeah so... i think a lot of it's like i don't know do you think that's like a part of it is like emotional intelligence just just being able to have that just let the emotion pass without reacting and kind of flailing mm. around straight away. I, I think it's part, it's part of it. Um, we've already touched on the ego as well. Um, people wanting to protect their ego, not admit if you're trying to protect your ego, it means you cannot admit to not know something and you can't admit to being wrong mm. really. And that's, that's deadly for a society, right? Like people need to be able to, People need to be allowed to be wrong. People need to be allowed yes. to say that they were wrong. People need to be allowed to say, I don't know, right? We None of us are experts at everything. In fact, we're pretty ignorant about most things. Um, but, and also people need to be, um, you know, this comes to more kind of cancel culture kind of thing. People need to also be willing to offer each other forgiveness and salvation, right? It can't just be, oh, yo, you, you said the wrong thing. You said the wrong thing in a podcast, Tom, and <laughs> that's it. It's over for you. It's, it's over for you. you I, we're, I got we're, told we're, to we're... delete it. I, I, was, I was ordered <laughs> to delete it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's it. We're, but we're luckily I'm proud of myself that I didn't, and... I didn't take the bait. I was obviously your first emotional reaction is like, fuck that guy. I'm going to, you know, yeah. I'm going to destroy him. But then I'm like, yeah. why would I even feed the demons in that? You know, so to exactly. Speak? Just, exactly. So I, I should um, be flattered that people are, they care enough to actually make a video. So in that <laughs> sense, it's like, Oh, cool. Yeah. That, that, and that's it happens good, to all my hero. It happens to all my heroes as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Who, who are your heroes? Oh, I like, you know, one that comes to mind, Jordan Peterson, lately, mm -hmm. I feel like he kind of helped me during a time of existential crisis. Mm. Uh, that was a bunch, man. Like even like Joe Rogan, in a sense, just mm -hmm. like entrepreneurially. Uh, I, don't, I can't even think there's too many. Yeah, man. No, it's, 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 it's good, man. It's good. And you know, I you, think you the reason the why, time, of course, you know, there are even some, mm -hmm. you know, heroes, so to speak, which I looked up to a lot when I was younger. And as I got older, I still respect them, but there's certain mm. things I'm like, oh, you, you're kind of off here, but that's okay. I can leave that. I'm not going to judge you as a person mm. because I don't agree with this specific point. I'll just take everything else that you have. And exactly. people don't seem to have that ability where if you have Look, I, one I, point I think... that's wrong, then nah. <laughs> I, I think the future is going to go to people who are able to do nuance. Right. I, I, I think th this might actually be one of the uh, so. separations that's happening in society. And it's essentially like people who can do nuance or are willing to, or at least trying and people who, do, who just aren't. Right. And it's just, it, it's actually tolerance. Um, you know, in our society, we talk a lot about, we like the words tolerance and diversity, but how for, forget the buzzwords. What about actually exemplifying these things? Mm. right? How do you actually handle it when somebody does have a divergent view or belief system to you or sees the world slightly differently or sees religion differently or sees politics differently? Like, do you suddenly become a demon towards them? Yeah. You, you, might, not be as you, you might not be as tolerant um, and pro-diversity as, as, as you thought you were, right? Because um, oh, yeah. tolerance isn't about, you see tolerance when during disagreement. It's not during agreement. Like everyone tolerates views. <laughs> of course, everyone tolerates views that uh, that are in line with them, or when people are saying things that they that they like. Um, but tolerance comes when it's like, oh wow, okay, I didn't like that, or maybe I even found that somewhat offensive or whatever. But then is your first reaction that you know the uh, police should come and arrest that person and throw them in jail because they said something you don't like, or they, you know, stepped on one of your sacred cows a bit? Mm, well, you know. What, yeah, what do you yeah. really believe about liberty and freedom of speech and, uh, you know, diversity of thought and tolerance and all of that. So that's where people need to be. That's where people need to be cautious, especially with where we are now, because, you know, let's be real in a lot of, in a lot of countries in Western countries, we're at the point where segregation is actually being done and is being advocated, not just by governments, but by 
by citizens. Yeah, yeah, by the people. Like there, there's people who are literally become segregationists again. I didn't think I was going to see that in my lifetime. Um, oh yeah. Oh, it's like here but, as well. They've just passed all the bill for you know giving government extra power and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And most people yeah. think it's okay. And and, and, and yeah, it's, it's we're, very. We're in, we're in a unique situation. We're in a pandemic. Like that's the thing that they'll say. No, but, but, but I'm looking. I'm not. But looking how long? At... How long are you gonna? How long are they gonna say that? Yeah. And at what point? Uh, I think something that you said, like <laughs> what you were speaking about two years ago, everyone agreed with you, and now that yeah. you're still saying the same thing, like what specific points would you say that most people would would have agreed with you two years ago, and now they're just going crazy for? What What would I say? Yeah, like what What did you say? Let's say two years ago, that mm -hmm. most people agreed with you, that now is really triggering them. Um, you shouldn't force people to have medical procedures against their will. That seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> if I said that in 2019, would anyone bat an eyelid? I would say I'm trying to kill people. Um, how about how about we should treat people equally and fairly? That seems pretty. Yeah, like we shouldn't, you know, ban certain people from entering restaurants or going to the shop or going to the cinema. Yeah. How about how about you also shouldn't need to show your papers to do basic tasks <laughs> like to watch a movie right? Right? Like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's you know, like that now that? like now i can't yeah. you can't go anywhere oh, really? outside the supermarket really retail shops uh barbers churches really uh I, I haven't been man i've been stuck here for ages that's so wild they just recently lifted the retail ban so now i can go and you know spend money and feed the economy like, that's what you. matters but i can't can't go to i can't go to a gym or lucky you you can go to the shop Oh, fantastic. It's like thank I couldn't you. do that. Thank I couldn't do that online. Thank you, Daddy so, Governor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, th those are. Those oh, the are a children playground. That, people... that was my that was my favorite. I'll put a video. Mm. As, as oh, a video. oh how, about, how about a big one? How about, how about <laughs> the playground? How about, how, about you shouldn't, how about you shouldn't force people to cover their faces in public? Like, what did people even, used to. What, even inside, what did people used to credit? But outside. What did people used to criticize Saudi Arabia for? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show your face. You can't wear that in a bank. <laughs> and I was like, like oh, excuse me. I need in, you to in, Europe, in Europe, literally a couple, three years ago in Europe, they were like pushing campaigns to ban, to ban people covering their faces in public, right? They have, there was all ban the burqa thing, especially in France and Belgium, um, which, you know, some people were saying is like insensitive towards, you know, um, Islamic people, et cetera. But other people are saying, look, this is France. You don't cover your face in public, right? Um, and now, <laughs> and then people are like, oh, this is different. How dare you compare them? It's different. This is about science. This is about science. It's like, well, is it really? Is it really? Uh, what you would know, you say? It's about science or is about compliance. But when people say, let, let's say, but, but isn't sometimes tyranny a good thing because they're no. forcing no. people to do a whole bunch of things? Or what tyranny about is never, or what tyranny about is never a good thing. What happened if it's for like the greater good and like Doesn't you're saving matter. lives? Excuse of every dictator ever in history. Mm. From and Stalin to Mao to Pol Pot to Hitler, all of them. The Chilean dictator too, Pinochet? All of them. That was a big Pinochet, one. all of them. They all used the greater good as their excuse. <sighs> like Thanos. Like Thanos. <laughs> 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 very literally and he had a very, very noble cause like I, yes. I i didn't agree with him but i 100 percent understood where he was coming from like yeah that's but at what the makes same, a good but, villain but at the end of the day he was playing god and isn't it funny how you, you've seen the marvels up until that point yeah, right yeah like how loki for example his big character arc was like i'm a god i'm above you people and then the last thing he said before he died was you will never be a god so even loki mm -hmm. himself with the biggest ego learn mm -hmm. that even him who is a god can't be god but yet mm -hmm. people human beings still have this kind of arrogance of like i know best and i'm going to yeah. impose my will on the rest of the planet look people can have people can have their beliefs but i'm always going to oppose aggression upon peaceful people mm. do not aggress upon peaceful do. people it doesn't matter whether you're the government or you're a citizen or you're a company whatever if you are aggressing upon peaceful people then i think you are in the wrong Oh. That's a pretty solid, you know, fundamental principle for me. Um, uh, if someone punches you, if someone if someone comes up to you and punches you or points a gun at you, that doesn't mean I'm saying you don't have a right to defend yourself because they are now the aggressor. But you do not aggress upon 
you don't aggress upon peaceful people. If you're, if you're just minding your business and living your life, then the government, other people, whatever should not come and start trying to force things on you or trample your rights or trying to hurt you or apprehend you, whatever. You know, it's interesting because it reminds me of, uh, when I went to a protest, uh, and this was a time where, well, actually, no, for the story of legally, I didn't actually go to the protest. I'm just going to pretend that I, I did go. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. But it was <clears> illegal <throat> at the time. And you'd get like a $5,000 fine if you went in protest. That's and so there, crazy. There was a bunch of people who rallied and basically there were flowers and flags and peace signs. And there was even a guy, I personally think it was someone planted from the opposition, trying to start <laughs> shit like... Oh, you know, okay. moving the telephone pole and everyone straight away it's like oh oh what are you doing we don't want violence we don't want we don't want to send that message so it's the right. complete opposite of what how the media portrays them and it and then the counter terrorist unit came the australian counter terrorist this full swat wow. hundreds even thousands the whole police force wow with shields and freaking guns and they're attacking and oh man i saw some really like, I don't want to, again, I don't, crazy. I, I don't want to feed the polarization of screw the cops or whatever. But at the same time, even if it's 0.1% of cops who are dicks, they need mm-hmm. to be held responsible for that. They should be held, of course. I think, you know? Yeah. Right? Look, look, again, I'm not pro cop nor anti cop. No. There's nuance. nuance right? <laughs> it's, it's nuance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's, it's all nuance. It's like, well, what is the cop doing? <laughs> you know, I'm very pro police in certain situations. And I've also seen some things where I'm like, okay, well, I am anti that police action or I am anti that police officer because what they just did was totally effed up and uncalled for and immoral. Um, Yeah, yeah, 100%. And so, yeah, again, it it comes comes back to that same thing. I mean, the the notion that in a supposedly liberal democracy, you make it illegal to protest, just that in itself... This ain't a democracy, is not a show. blows my brain like, like that, that blows my mind like to make it illegal to protest i mean that is some... no 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 it, it's even more specific than that it's it's illegal to protest anti-government because there was some other protest <laughs> that was like greens environment or whatever what you know whatever wow. socialist thing that they were doing fine that's that's so interesting. I mean, imagine a government making it illegal to, hmm, again, again, his, we have history guys, like, come on, you know, I know people get upset by historical comparisons, but that's literally why it's important to know history and to study because humanity goes in these cycles, it goes in these cycles. So you need to know where things can go and what you should be vigilant about and what you should yeah. be cautious about. And again, where those boundaries lie, you know, I think that that's so important for people to think, okay, where are these boundaries? And I think that's the thing that's like has been driving me crazy throughout this whole thing is because like, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this prior to any supposed crisis situation. I don't think we're in a crisis situation right now, but I've been spending, I, you know, I've spent years thinking about, I've read Gulag Archipelago. I've read Ordinary Men. I've, I've like studied some of this stuff. So I've spent a lot of time thinking, okay, where are my boundaries? And also if a situation were to ever arise that's in any way comparable to this thing, what am I going to do? How am I going to react? How am I going to treat also? Oh, how, am I, how am I going to behave? How am I going to treat my fellow man? Am I going to fall in with the mob? And, you know, or am I going to be a coward and just act like, act like it's not happening? Or am I going to mm. speak up, right? Think, think about, again, I think prior to this thing, you know, in 2018, 2019, people always used to say like, oh, you know, you know, people always wanted to believe that they would have been the ones who would have, you know, hid the Jews in their house during, you know, Nazi Germany, or that they would have been the one who would have freed the slaves, or they would have been the one who would have fought this or fought that. I think we know the truth now. I think we know what everybody would have done. And that's just real. That's just real. I think I, I think I, I know who the prison guards would have been. I know who the uh, mm-hmm. most pro, because uh, look, people, we have to remember these things happened. These events happened under the government, right? This was, this was government officials. Like, like the Nazi party of Germany was the main political party. Like that was the ruling political party. It wasn't some fringe, it wasn't some fringe crazy group. It's like, that was the mainstream 
Mm. political party that was like the main thing their, their freaking flag had the swastika on it like look at the the footage from like the olympics and stuff it's crazy they're all waving these flags and it's like wow that was the actual german flag oh my right God. it wasn't the nazi people I, mean, always... I didn't know that holy shit yeah like pe people forget that like the nazis weren't some fringe group like that was like the main leading party for many many years yeah. and so for people like to that. like for people to go against them um, you know, and of course, so most people are just like, go, go with the flow, you know, go with the flow and, um, keep your head down and hope that it doesn't hurt you. And then of course you'll have the people who are like, oh, you know what? I'm actually going to, I'm going to side with them, right. To make sure I'm extra safe or because I, I, I kind of agree with, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and I'm going to side with them and I'm going to join this party and I'm going to be like their key supporter and whatever. And okay, they want me to attack this person. I'm going to attack that person. They tell me to demonize this person. I'm going to demonize that person. Yeah. And, um, you know, people, and people don't like these comparisons and I know why people don't like them because, you know, they can often be used in a way that's people feel minimizes, um, right. the, or like the true atrocities. Dis disrespect yeah. Yeah. But, and, yeah. but people, again, people also have to remember that like when people make these comparisons, you're not directly comparing, say, what's happening now to like the Holocaust itself, mm. right? But the Holocaust didn't happen on day one, right? It was like, there, there's, the, the Holocaust wasn't the only thing bad that Nazi Germany did, right? There was a lot leading up to it. There was an environment that was created where people were trained to hate sure. their neighbors yeah, and people were blamed. People were even, a segment of the population was also blamed for disease. They were blamed for disease and for spreading disease. Huh. Right. So why do we need to segregate these people? Oh, because they're spreading disease. That was the justification right. for era oh. Zischerheit, right? For your safety. That's what it means. And now we have a uh, we have a second class citizens, right? And they're yes. Raiding so enemies. it's like and, and families won't like, even oh, invite you to dinner. There you <laughs> go. Right. So <laughs> so it's like you know, and if someone doesn't yeah. like that comparison, look, go back to 1994, Rwandan genocide. Hmm. Over three over over one million people killed in three months. 1994. Where was this? Rwanda. Oh, wow. the Rwandan genocide. Holy crap. Egged on by the government, egged on by the media. <sighs> one million, one million bodies in three months, mostly killed by their neighbors. Wow. Right. So you don't, so if someone Man, doesn't I'm like, just, I'm you just know, picturing 1.1 million dead bodies in my brain. In three, 90 like... days, 90 days. It, it only, it only took 90 days. Um, this is 1994. Like but this is not. Like, yeah, but that won't happen to us. There. That's yeah. So again, <laughs> like, I, 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 I freaking hope it doesn't. But like, you have to learn from these lessons, right? You have to like look at it and go, okay. <clears throat> when the media or the government or people in general start like very much demonizing a specific group or demographic of people, blaming them for disease, segregating them, like even pushing for for active policies that uh harm them preventing them from working again these uh, are all things that have they, happened they have like to put a, they have so, to put a badge or something like to show yes like, forcing yes. them to identify themselves making yes. them show their papers so on and so like every time that's happened in history this has never been good like it's, it's never been good so i'm just like look like get off this train now like let's not even let's not get to a stage where i mean dude bro you've got camps you've got freaking camps in your country they're putting people in camps in your country Fuck, i know it's scary like I couldn't, even go, I couldn't even go camping for for a long time. So wait, so I can't go by myself, isolated in the middle of nature. But because what? bro, that you they have camps, they have internment camps in Australia. I know, I have like, some like, stories. Yeah, think think about that. Like, what on earth? Like that in itself. And, and most that... people are like, good, they should be. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> this is what I mean. Like that in itself should make people be like, um, okay, like Cause, cause wait, most, I, you're, you're forcibly. <laughs> getting people out of their house and you're putting them in care. like whether or not you think whatever the, whatever the justification supposedly for it is, that's a certain thing where she just be like, no, like, no, like that's not, that's not good. Like that, that's bad. We shouldn't, we shouldn't excuse that one. We shouldn't justify that one. That's, that's no, that that's crossing a line. Like we, we're crossing several lines here, which again, in our entire lifetimes, Man, again, just go back to 2019 and imagine someone saying that, oh, you know what? Oh, you got a, you got a cold? You got flu symptoms? All right, we're going to put you in a freaking camp on the outskirts. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> we're and gonna, we're going to bring show, the police to your house. you have to show ID papers to go inside the well, cinema. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to bring the police. Yeah. We're going to bring the police to your house. We're going to drag you out of your house because you've got flu symptoms. And we're going to put you, or you've been in contact with somebody who has flu symptoms. 
Oh, yeah. That's what happened gonna, to gonna, an Australian you. girl in Perth. She moved out of yeah. Melbourne because of all the craziness. Mm. She went in. They found out that she was with contact with someone who had COVID. And she ended up being in this camp for like two weeks. And it was like a prison. <laughs> And you say, and they even crazy. said, you can't cross that. If you cross that line, you get a five thousand dollar fine. So it's like, all right. So here I'm safe, but one mm-hmm. step here, no. Mm-hmm. Science. You've broken the law. Science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Science. Oh, it's like same and with sitting down, right? Like if you go on. Only if you're eating. Cafe, you yeah, have so to I was be. Thinking, I was thinking. So should I just bring a portable chair and table and a meal every time I want to take my mask off? Yeah, it I mean, seems to be, it seems to protect you, right? Stick yeah, down. I mean, that, that's that's the science. I mean, it gets you in the restaurant doorways, but only if you're standing up. As soon as you're inside, you're all all good, all good. Yeah, it's 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 nutty, man. Um, I I do think that the whole thing is going to collapse. I don't want to black pill black pill people. Um, I think it's going to collapse actually in under a year. I think mm-hmm. it's going to collapse within a year. Um, but again, people need to. We, the temperature needs to come down. People need to get out of this division. And, 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 and that's, why, that's what I think is so appalling with what um, the governments, and I'd actually say especially the media, like the, some of the media rhetoric around this whole thing oh, has been diabolical. Yeah, it's yeah. been gross. It's been horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, what on earth? You know, and then two minutes later, these same people will be like inclusion, diversity, tolerance. And I'm like, shut up. Like, <laughs> Except just, for when just, it just... comes to the others, of course. Yeah, I, exactly. You know, yeah. it's just like, just, just stop guys. Um, you know, and, and the thing is as well, it's like stuff is fine. You know, they've been fear mongering for such a long period of time, but like the supposed threat is not anything close to what they're trying to get people to perceive it to be you know i can understand people freaking out in like february 2020 you know there's some new virus that's come over from wuhan china and we don't know anything about it and there's no we don't know anything about treatments or vaccines or who it affects or whatever it's like bro it's two years now okay like we we've seen that how many how many people have died in your whole country from this oh i don't know someone who had to comment below give me the stats but i feel like not less than ten thousand for sure Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, Australia. Yeah, let's... Okay. Australia is about 20 million people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just over. Okay. 2,134. Wow. In two years. And how many? I, let me make people? sure. I, let me make, yeah, let me make wow. sure I've got that in the right period. Yeah. I think this is from the, I think this is from the beginning. Huh? And yeah, 2,134. So about three people a day is that right yeah About three crazy, people a day more people kill themselves every day yeah i know and I, I feel like that that's something that it's not necessarily being concerned with the virus I, like i i understand it i really do and i understand the other perspective but then there's three also people like a day they don't acknowledge <laughs> the other side of it like the, the negative that's happening like more people killing themselves drugs domestic that's why i think violence. the whole thing that's why i think the whole thing is evil man i, I think the whole thing's evil i, I don't think it's incompetence um I'm not of the opinion that this is incompetence. I'm, I'm of the opinion that we are dealing with um, evil people here. Um, mm. I don't like to say that, and I, I understand why people don't want to accept that. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, three a day, and some people will be like, oh, well, it's because they took such drastic policies. And it's like, well, is this the only, do you think that's the only thing that can kill people? Is that the only, is, is like reducing COVID deaths? Who, who decided? This whole thing has been a philosophical um, thing that we never had, no country had a discussion about. Who decided that re- that minimizing COVID deaths at all costs is the most important thing in the world? Who decided that? Mm. At all costs. That's a good question. Well, that's a great why? question. Like that. That's the first. That should be in the very first question. Is that is it more important than all the other sources of death? Is Apparently. it more important than the economy and people's jobs? Is it more important than civil liberties and upholding? Mm freedom and rights and democracy is it more important than people dying of suicide and cancer and all the mental health issues that are going on is it more important than children being able to go to school and people being able to go to university and people just being able to live there like these these are big questions and you know people will have different answers on all these things i mean look in the uk for example so in the uk the official um (laughs) The official death count is nonsense because it's deaths within 28 days of a positive test. But the total count is around, I think it's between 140 and 150,000. 
out of 67 million people. And this is again, over the course of two years. So from the very beginning, mm. about hundred, say 145,000, um, it's estimated that 740,000 cancer patients have missed diagnoses and treatment in that two year period because so much focus and resources have been on their own. Wow. Three quarters of a million people. Wow. Right. That's crazy. And that's just cancer. That's just cancer. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the suicide numbers are. Oh, yeah. I don't heart, know. Heart what disease, the... oh, that would be even bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Inflate. And even look at the, like people talk about, and even inflation, because I remember last year, you know, when people were concerned about the economy and people were like, oh, you're putting money above human lives. And it's like, you don't understand what the economy is. Mm. Human lives, human lives are the economy. Like we all are the economy. Like that's what it is. It's not just like a stock market ticker. We are the economy. If people are not working and businesses are shut and no one's going to cinemas or restaurants or music concerts or just like corporate jobs or whatever, then you're crushing the economy and then you're putting trillions and trillions of dollars into it. So inflation is a big deal. You know, if you look yeah, at somewhere like sure. Turkey, yeah. so I was in Turkey in July, their, their currency has crashed about 45% since July. Wow. Right. They've just last week, they just had to increase the minimum wage by 50%. So inflation is a big deal. Imagine Imagine your money, imagine all your money, all your savings, everything being cut in half within six months, right? That's imagine how and that, that could destroy that, that, that destroy it, that, that completely destroy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that destroys people. Right. And then all, and then at the same time, the price of goods, of course, to, to counteract this has also gone up. And so people aren't thinking long-term about like, no. okay, well, what is the, what are the long-term ramifications of this? I mean, I, I even wonder with, um, I mean, it's interesting because you're in Australia. So one thing I wonder with Australia and New Zealand is um, those countries will like, because of these hyper protectionist policies, it means that the virus has not, has not even started to run its course in those countries. No. Right. Like it hasn't even started, like barely anyone there got infected to begin with. So like almost no one has natural immunity. So whenever they do decide to actually open those countries up to international travel and to let people out and in, in again, there's going to be, there's going to be a gigantic spike in cases. People are suddenly going to start getting, because, because the, the virus is not going away. I think people wanted to believe that like, you know, oh, we just, it's, it's going to go away. It's like, well, it's not going away. We destroy it. So, but we're gonna make yeah. It so what, so, so I wonder yeah. with those two countries in particular, what is the exit strategy? I don't know if your politicians talk about this, but what is, what is their plan for like actually going back to normal and engaging with the outside world again? How oh. is that going to, because you can't just keep locking down every time you get one or no. two, well, their priorities one are or all two positives. Up. I remember because Melbourne, for those who don't know, had the longest lockdown in the world. I'm trying to put in that world, in perspective. Yeah. I was in the city with the longest lockdown in the world. And I feel- How long was that? Uh, oh, I was- since March till just recently, really just a couple months ago. <sighs> but now there's the mandates. So it's the lockdowns aren't- for, for, when you, March, March, 2021? Yeah, 2020. So now? From March, okay, so- Yeah, we, you, we had it early. We had the one yeah. of the earliest lockdowns in the world. So, so you had like an 18, 20, 19 month lockdown or whatever. Yeah. And it kind of came in and out. Like sometimes it'd be like a stage yeah. four lockdown then they'll ease it up. And but some, some degree. Yeah, yeah. But th there was always some level of restriction mm, since mm. March and it, so it, it gets to, you, you know, like at the start, I took advantage because you don't know where this is going to go. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to learn some, learn some piano, some, pro you know, music production, just whatever, a any habits that I could, any new things, activities that I could do. But after a while, it's like, oh, okay, get me out of here. This is getting and, and that's you, man. I mean, think about, think about kids. Yeah, that's what I'm, you know, think, think, think about children. Imagine. Like why won't this, someone this is, please think of the children? It's true. It's though. true though. And, oh, and, no, and, 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 and also the, the thing that, that hits extra hard with that is we have known from March, 2020, that that is the demographic that is really, really not affected by this thing. No. Like there's never, I'm not aware of a single healthy child anywhere in the world dying of this particular virus. It's not to say it hasn't happened, but it's probably less than 10 around the entire world. Yeah, in yeah. two years and if it has so, incredibly rare right 
Yeah. I mean, in the USA, according to their, uh, they believe that under 18s, so under 18s, so keep in mind the USA has 330 million people. Out of under 18s, I think the John Hopkins, I think they estimated that 10 to 20 healthy under 18s have died with COVID in the past two years. Worldwide? And when and, and and under 18s doesn't mean necessarily mean like children, like where that's not like you know, babies, like you know, that could be most likely people who are teenagers, 10 yeah, to yeah. 20. So you're talking like like that is nothing compared to compared to deaths caused by like anything, like everything Peanut else. Allergies. Everything, <laughs> yeah, like everything else. Yeah, like yeah. I think more people get like flattened by vending machines or I struck by lightning and so on. McDonald's, maybe not directly straight away, but oh yeah, oh uh, oh by oh by miles. Oh, my, my. again, it's like you say, people don't look at the long term. They don't look at the domino yeah. effect. We separate, we fragment reality, mental health physical health, mm -hmm. economy, when it's all tied in together. Because mm -hmm. one person shutting down their business, it's not just about money, because they can go into a downward spiral, their family could fall apart, he can end up killing themselves. I actually mm -hmm. have known friends, friends of friends, who have killed themselves because of the, the business. Yep. Went so down Same. and stuff like Same. that. And then you got to think of what effect does that ha a suicide have? It's horrific like that is going to send and, and, and you all, waves. and you also have to remember here look here's another thing so this this comes back to remember what i was saying earlier in the podcast about like things we can and can't quantify mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if they're open with the statistics which can actually be quite hard to get because they kind of suppress suicide statistics but a suicide okay suicides are quantifiable you can count those mm -hmm. but that's like the very last stage of someone's mental health being absolutely destroyed Yes, and the for each for the each suicide for of everyone else, the beginning for of each chaos. suicide, how many hundreds or thousands of people became like contemplated it, or became very depressed, or became very anxious, or withdrawn, or whatever it is. Like yeah. you can't I've, count I've that. Been, there, there, there's I've no, been there, you know. So yeah, I, there, I there's no there's no statistic for that, no. right? You're not included in any statistic. No, you see what yeah. I mean. But for everyone who goes as far as to go to an extreme of actually offing themselves. Like you're going to have another, I don't know, a thousand people who fell into a much darker and worse place. And again, how do you, I don't know the math of that. I don't know how you, how you weigh that up and you consider that. And what's the long-term effect of that, especially on a child, mm. right? If, if you let a child fall into a depression at the age of freaking five, right. And train them to be like afraid of, you know, their friends and their family and their neighbors oh, yeah. and they're seeing everyone in Matt. Like what, when that child is 15 or 25, what's the effect on him? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully it's not too giving, severe. Giving kids antidepressants. Yeah. Uh, like so early on, like mm -hmm. I remember, I, apparently mom told me that I got diagnosed, like, cause I had crazy AD, ADHD or whatever. And they prescribed me whatever it was, Ritalin or whatever the drug that they've prescribed mm -hmm. for that. And then my mom's friends like throw that shit in the bin. And then she did. And so mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just thinking of like how much I dodged the bullet. Like imagine if I was medicated since a child. Yeah. Like, and there, I don't know there, what are, it's like who, there are a lot of people who mm. don't dodge that bullet. Yeah. Especially in the USA. In the oh, USA, yes. like yeah, they medicalize guys, like crazy. Put it on I'm not American. I'm not uh, American. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're living there now. So in a way. <laughs> I'm in England right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember because I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast that you were in and you were thinking yeah, yeah. of moving, you were applying for a visa for the US. Yeah, I've actually got it. Oh, um, yeah. But I'm in England right now as we record this. So, uh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, you got, are you going to end up living there? Yeah. Nice. Whereabouts? Yeah. Uh, me probably, probably Texas or Tennessee. Nice. Yeah, but we'll see. There's a lot to work out. Now, I'd love to go to the US, but. I think a lot of the theme that we're talking about is just people unable to acknowledge the dark side of humanity in many mm. ways. And the line between good and evil is getting blurrier and blurrier as time goes on. We've got more relativistic, more becoming our own God, so to speak. Mm. And even that whole thing that you talked about the Nazis and stuff, like most people wouldn't, if you ask them, like if you were back in World War II and you were part of the German population, would you have killed the Jews? I would say 99% of people would say like, no, of course not. That's horrible. But then the reality is I think, a lot of people... I think, I think it's the wrong question. Okay. 
And the, I think the real question is, would you have spoken out? Would you have even spoken out against it? That's true. That's would you have opposed it? Would you have opposed it in any meaningful way? And even here in Australia, I've noticed the majority of my friends and family were totally against this whole thing, but they had to do it because of, you know, they didn't have to don't give well, them yeah, that. You're right. You're right. Everything's a choice. It's always they'll, a choice. They were put in a very difficult situation where if yes. they didn't do this thing, life would have been hell. And mm. I don't, I don't, but you know what, if, yeah. if, if all of those people collectively had said no, it would have been a wrap. I wish. That's the problem. That's always the problem, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. People, people forget how much power they collectively have. People forget how much power they have both individually and collectively. Hmm. Um, and I, th I think it's a shame that people... Look, I mean, I'm, I'm one guy. And I'm not trying to, you know, be or sound like some hero here. But I've freaking seen the effect that I have had on a global scale in terms of <clears throat> helping people right? Like helping people, you know, even get through this particular time period, like every city I go to, like around the world, I, I will have people stop me and thank me and tell me like stories and what, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm one dude, you know, I'm, I'm one guy. Um, and I'm like, man, anyone, anyone can do that to some degree. And imagine if all those people who have a problem with it, all those people who are like uncomfortable, who are like, yeah, I don't like, imagine if all those people together were just like, you know what? No, no, we're going to stand together and we're going to say no. And there are way more of us than there are of anyone trying to enforce this. So mm. just leave us alone. We're, okay. we're standing there's, together. There's a speech in Bugs Life where like, the mm, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if they only knew, like they could, yeah. they could overpower us easily. They yeah. absolutely, they would destroy us in numbers, but we've got to keep yeah. instilling that fear. I'm paraphrasing because I haven't seen that movie in ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might like watch that. that movie again. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. So a lot of these clues are in movies. That's what I find so fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's because, it's because the, the, it's because these stories are, um, you know, they're very human stories and they repeat. They repeat over and over and over again. Like how many stories are there of human beings fighting against tyranny? All, all the time. Right? Like the hero's like, journey, right? Most yeah. people still to this day, like superheroes has reached its peak in popularity. I'm sure it's even going to exceed that. But people mm. love heroes in movies. But then when it comes yes. to real life and what do these heroes do? They go against the establishment. They, you know, they stand up for what's right, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Self-sacrificial. But then when mm -hmm. people actually do that in real life, I feel like people don't like heroes as much as they think they do. Not yes. saying that like we're he like heroes or whatever, but like you you know what I'm saying, like just that yeah. general archetype. I, I know I know we're coming up to two hours, so I'm gonna make one more. I'm gonna make one more talk, one more comment that's really interesting based on what you just said and something that was I was actually thinking about literally last week, um, even when it comes to like these comic books and movies and stuff, which is, um, what is the difference between a hero and a villain? Mm. Right. And if you think about all these, all these movies and comic books and whatever, you mentioned Thanos before, um, you know, you could talk about like Magneto and X-Men or whatever it is. And the villains always have, they have their own ideology and notion that they are doing something for the greater good. Yes. The difference, think about it, whether you're looking at Marvel universe, DC universe or whatever, the difference between the heroes and the villains is the villains as I said before, are willing to aggress upon and hurt peaceful people to meet their goals. The heroes are not. Yes. Well, it's like Thanos. I, I'm the only one with the will yeah. to execute. That's the this. difference. Th yeah. Think think of every every villain, whether it's Killmonger, yeah. it's Thanos, it's Goblin. Magneto, Either. all of them. Yeah. It's jo it's the Joker, whatever, right? They have their ideology and you, you can and you can empathize with them to some degree mm -hmm. because they they have like a certain philosophy. But their philosophy, they are willing to hurt, kill, maim innocent people, innocent, peaceful people to reach their greater good. That's the same with the villains in the human world. The heroes have their own idea and philosophy and idea of how to progress society. But you go, uh -uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to hurt. I'm not going to hurt innocent people to meet this goal. I, I, I draw that line. That's um, so true, man. And so I think that's like the core difference. It's not just like these villains are 
people who are just like that, that's why i think r- rubbish villains are the ones who are just like i'm evil and i want to take over the world yeah, mustache like, twirling yeah, yeah, th- yeah those are the worst those are the worst villains because it's just like they're just kind of like bad and there's no there's no deeper philosophy that's, it's, it's interesting. just like i'm just a bad guy the last spider-man movie i watched it was an interview with the villains and they made that exact point it's like you know, okay. villains today are a lot deeper and richer and they're actually good people who were put into bad situations but mm. like you're saying the difference between the hero and villain another interesting point is that sometimes the hero and the villain actually believe in the same thing mm-hmm. but they go different approaches you know yeah one is will- one is willing to hurt people to get there yes the other is not that that's wow. that's that's well, what like, it is you know it's... not to, to bring another spider-man example yeah. but it's like doc ock you know he wanted to mm-hmm. make the world a better place and advance science mm-hmm. and that's exactly what peter parker was but, was but he's better, but he's willing uh, to hurt people exactly has, has spider-man ever hurt an innocent person intentionally yeah. no he, he won't even kill no. he won't even kill a villain mm-hmm. like horrible mm-hmm. monsters and he will refuse mm-hmm. to kill them that's what mm-hmm. makes him a great a great hero. spider-man superman batman none of them will aggress upon peaceful people mm. all their all their enemies will if it, if it gets them closer to their goal if you gotta you know take out that lady in the street or blow up that building yeah. or whatever they're willing to do it break a few eggs to make an omelet right yeah that's how you know terrorists are bad guys <laughs> yeah no doubt well, on that really note, good like, really good to chat bro yeah bro like just before you go could you just quickly as briefly as you can just tell this because i want to ask you about that story about how you you know you broke the the you identified <laughs> as a woman i, I gotta get that in there somehow it wasn't a, it wasn't a smooth segue but maybe you can just yeah. finish briefly on yeah what sure. happened? No people are, <laughs> i just find that hilarious <laughs> yeah so that's going back to um february 2019 man it's it's approaching three years now so um, wow. I, I had a tweet where I was a nine second video of me doing a 203 kilo deadlift. And I tweeted something like, I keep hearing about how biological men have no strength advantage over women in 2019. So watch me destroy the British women's deadlift record without trying. P.S. I identified as a woman whilst lifting the weight. Don't be a bigot. So um, <laughs> yeah, you, you transition back to, to male, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I switched back. I switched back and forth depending on what's uh, expedient at the time. So I put that out there. I had like 18,000 followers on Twitter at the time. I think as I record this, I've got an extra 600,000. <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I, I just put, I just put that out there you know, thinking, uh, it was funny to me. So I was, ah, I'll get a few shares. It'll get a few likes or whatever. And very quickly, I realized that, um, I had created an internet moment. Uh, <laughs> I, I had done something cause this thing went absolutely bananas. It went crazy viral internationally all over the world. Everyone was like, people were just commenting on it and sharing it and it led to a whole bunch of different interviews. It's how Joe Rogan discovered me actually. Um, oh, that's and awesome, so man. brave move. Yeah. Did you get more hate yeah. or support during these times? Oh, support by miles. Like you're talking a hundred to one. Wow. hundred to one. Like not even, yeah, it, it wasn't and even close. What about now? Close. 2021. Now? Yeah. Still a hundred to one. Oh, okay. Nice. Still a hundred to one, but you know, we, we human beings are very susceptible to, you know, we're more susceptible to negativity than positivity. That's true. Because so I think you, you get the same, right? Out, we'll, yeah, we'll, exactly. I can read a hundred comments praising me, and then that one. There you go. That, that exactly. Sticks, could, sticks, yeah. yeah. You know, you got a thousand YouTube comments. Ten of them are negative. It's the ten that you feel some way about. Yeah. Right. The 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 nine hundred and ninety. They're like, man, that was great, Tom. I love your work. New subscriber here. Happy to be here or whatever. You're just like, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah, one yeah, guy yeah, who's sure. like, freaking, oh, I don't, I don't like this guy or he did this wrong or whatever. That's the one you dwell on and it sits in your brain. <laughs> so that's just how, that's how people are built. But I think that once you know that, then you can also see those ones and kind of just move on and be like, all right, whatever, dude. Beautiful. Well, amen, brother. Good, to, <laughs> no, good, good way to end the, the podcast. Just want to thank you again for coming on. I know you're pro- a very busy man, I'm sure. And we've got Christmas time coming up. So yeah, man, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, is there any, did you want to promote anything that you're doing right now or any um, channel you want to, you want to promote? Sure. So, um, you can check me out on all social media. I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Zuby music. That is Z U B Y music. And if you go to zubimusic.com, then you can find links to everything I do, including my music, my podcast, and all my other work. Beautiful, man.
Awesome. Well, thanks for listening, nice one, everybody. I uh, really enjoyed our chat and yeah, hopefully we can do this again sometime in the future. Up to you, no pressure. Just putting it out there. No doubt, uh, Tom. I appreciate it, brother. All right, brother. Well, enjoy your Christmas. Have a happy new year and we'll I'll, I'll let you know when this is all up and running. Nice one, man. Likewise. All right, brother. Peace out. Take care. Bye-bye. Catch you next time. Bye.